Ja, 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 ja. Ja, 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 ja. Yeah, 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 yeah. Early mornings, brother. Early, Early mornings, man. Early man. mornings. We out here. We live. There's, there's a lot that happened last week. Um, brother. I feel like we missed so much because a lot of the stuff happened early in the week. Um, mm -hmm. But, man, I don't know why we should even start. Do we start with with uh with the most recent stuff or do we go back and, and come back forward? Like, how do we do this, man? It's, it's really, it's really how how much fun you want to have like do we want to do we want to finish up our drake discussion now i will give you your props your man's is holding it down that drake record has not been topped yet so i we gotta first of all give drake his credit yeah. ross and drop I, yo kanye came out of nowhere i wasn't expecting none of that then your man's came back well before that kanye dropped the ai disc no, you know uh, what I'm saying? Drake dropped the AI disc. Yeah, Drake dropped the AI disc. Yeah. Uh, like, you know what I'm saying? Everybody been trying to have their little moments, but it hasn't really topped with Drake. Is we talking about lyricism, we talking about having a dope record. Yeah, and nobody's right. let's start it. there then. Let's start there. So, first mm -hmm. off, I I I appreciate and I'm super happy that Drake put the uh project on. I made a song on iTunes, uh, the push-ups song on iTunes. Not yeah. the fact that he put it on iTunes and I can listen to it. That I mean that's pretty dope, right? Yeah. But it it was a sense of relief, like okay, he did do this because remember, like even I was right. I was kind of wishing that he would just come out and take ownership of the record. So the right. fact that he put it on iTunes, it was like I could have did an IG post, like you could have posted it on IG. But the fact <laughs> that he put it on iTunes, I was like, there we go, we standing on business. And mm -hmm. then he came back to drop the AI track. Which is mm -hmm. funny, but it still was good. So, mm -hmm. nah, I, but I've been saying this, bro. I've been saying Drake is that guy. I've been saying nobody really could rock with him. I've been saying, yeah. and, and, and it's funny because remember I was joking about the Wayno episode, and mm -hmm. like, I mean, me personally, I think it's Asian. I think it's Asian. Well, because mm -hmm. again, everything I'm, I'm I'm seeing, everything I've been saying that people saying I see academics saying I see like other people saying like, bro, Kendrick Lamar can't just come out and drop some super uh lyrical like it, it just can't be that like we, we want to be able to digest it it got to be funny it got to be witty you know what i'm saying and these are the mm -hmm. things that make drake good in my opinion you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. it's not the, it's, it's the fact that he can rap right he can give you bars lyrics metaphors similes all that but on top of that he can make a song that's catchy that we want to play in our car that's what makes him the goat to me not the fact that mm -hmm. he can come out here and start rapping in algebra algebraic time ter terms like bro i don't want to hear that personally me and maybe even because I'm, I'm younger but i don't want to hear the the like even when pusha t dropped his his project i mean his this kind of added on to drake it still has some sense of simplicity to it you mm -hmm. get what i'm saying like mm -hmm. like so me personally i don't even know if i care to hear a, a kendrick lamar um Ooh, look 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 yes. look you were trying to take over the whole situation. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad. But no, I, I'm not saying, I, yo, the man ain't even gave his response yet. You already, you already cutting him out the situation. That's unfair. Nah, Only right. All right. This is what I'm giving Drake his points for. Number one, coming with the best diss record so far. That's number one. Number yeah. two, the funniest social media Bro. stuff in he years, 50, bro. He on his 50 cent. <laughs> yo, he he be having me rolling, bro. I've been rolling off of him, yo. Yeah. The AI, the AI joint with Tupac and Snoop on it. Snoop waking up going, I don't know what's going on. Yo, that was hilarious. You know me. what's funny? I was curious. That was a bold move, though. Mm -hmm. Because Snoop Dogg is still alive, right? And, right. okay, Tupac, maybe that could be funny. Like, he ain't making no money off of it, so nobody is going to, like, Check. I don't know. I don't know. It was a bold move because what if like you burnt the bridge with Snoop? In my mind, mm. I thought he might have talked with Snoop at least. Mm. At least let him know like he's going to do something funny because I don't right. think it's worth burning that bridge with Snoop Dogg. Like that's a legend. Imagine if Snoop Dogg really? didn't didn't hear nothing about it right from Drake and he wakes right. up and he hear that like bro, bro, like you can't do that, bro. Like, like what type of time are you on? Or maybe Drake don't care. Maybe he's maybe he's that much savage that he don't care. No, I agree with you, but I don't feel like you know. We we I feel like Drake knows Snoop enough to know. 
Man, this ain't nothing. And we all know this ain't street related. This is just hip hop. So, you know, Snoop's like, man, whatever, yo, yo. It's like, yo, let the kids play, man. Let the kids is do what that, they do. No, no, because when it comes to like hometown, we all know how that goes, right? So if it's like, mm -hmm. let the kids play and you don't ask me, right? And then you drop a diss record, this is somebody from my, it's not, let's say from my neck of the woods, right? From the West Coast, you mm -hmm. know, I represent West Coast. So you putting that on a track, is sort of like me co-signing it, right? If I'm not, mm -hmm. I could, I could see Snoop Dogg not being okay with that. Like mm -hmm. I can see him, like yo, like don't do that. Like this, this is hometown. I, I ride with you, but this hometown, we don't do that over here. Right, but that's a risk you got to take sometimes when you're doing this. Uh, but I, I could also see tech. I mean, tech, I could also see Drake sending over a text message saying, "Hey, bro, it's just something funny, you know what I mean?" Uh, and niggas just playing along. Now, this is where the genius to me, the genius in the AI this is. Is Drake saying a bunch of stuff that he can't really say? If you think about the diss, in the diss, he's saying, Yo, you not a street dude. You never got into a fight. You never did blah, blah, blah. But you know, Drake can't say that because it could be thrown back in his face. I was thinking the same thing. You know what I'm saying? I was like, This is genius. I, I, I was like, thinking the same thing, like the nerve. Of this, the grassy category <laughs> half black, half white. I don't know. I don't, like, I told you, listen, I don't care what nobody say. I think I'm the most unbiased. I mm -hmm. love Drake as an artist, bro. Mm -hmm. But Drake, we ain't about to sit up here and act like you just like this, some tough com Canadian guy. Like, bro, right. like, you're soft, bro. But I love this for hip hop. Let's just say, it like, that. so if it's, bro, you know, rap. <laughs> Like <laughs> rap is exaggerated a lot, so I'm not mad at the bars. You know, I'm not mad at it. No, I'm not nah. mad at it. Like, but um, back to back to my uh, point. I think Kendrick Lamar, like he's good. Like, and I and I want to give him his respect. But mm -hmm. I love how Drake is handling this because he's giving us, he's giving the fans what he what 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 we want. Like, think exactly. about it. We wanted to hear. We wanted to. His fans wanted him to own the disc. He right. owned it. Right, and he's still trolling. He's like, yo, what are we going to do? I've been waiting a long time for this. What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> and it makes me think. To be honest, it makes me think that Drake knows something else that we don't know. Like because he's going too hard. Like Kendrick Lamar isn't a scrub. Like I might not like him, right? But he's not right. a scrub. Let's not do that. He's not. He's not right. a bum. He's not. Right. He's not. He. He's one of them guys when it comes to upper echelon rappers, right? right? So for him to be going this hard at Kendrick Lamar is like. What because you know, he's softening up the ground. It, it, all right, let's just take away the concept of him having some sneaky stuff in the background. He is chipping away at Kendrick Lamar's credibility at, with little things here and there. Yo, the AI diss, you know, him drone, throwing stuff on social media, him doing the diss record, you know what I mean, doing the original diss record. Like, he's chipping away at Kendrick Lamar's credibility using everything around him. So when the diss record, so no matter how hard the diss record is, you you know us as the consumer even if i'm a kendrick fan it's going to be like man that wasn't as ill as it could be you know what i mean it wasn't as much as it could be you know what i mean so like like that's what i think the genius of it is like you know I kendrick think, you drop nothing and we already like oh he quit he catching the l so i i'm not gonna say he catching the l but i'm just not a pr i said this a hundred times so i don't need to keep saying it but you got kendrick lamar fans i'm just not one of them all i am saying is I think it's pretty dope for Drake to be trying to bully the supposed to be bully. Mm. Like that's that's mm -hmm. like I like that. I don't like when like mm. if, if niggas still shooting shots at Drake, I mean at J. Cole, that's corny, like you bullying at this point. But the fact that Drake is like, nah, you big dog, I'm coming to you. And to be honest, I don't think Drake should respond. We're gonna get to Kanye West. I don't think Drake should respond to nobody else. Cause I, I heard mm -hmm. some people say Kendrick, I think Imani from Joe Button Podcast was like, uh, Kendrick Lamar shouldn't respond. Until everybody else respond and like respond later, or something like that. And wait, I'm like, no, if anything, Drake is calling Kendrick Lamar out right. single handedly. He's not even, like, yeah, he's throwing shots at everybody else because they threw shots at him, but he's not right. really dissing them. He's calling out Kendrick right. Lamar. If right. anything, I think we should reverse it. And I think Drake should stop responding to everybody else and only make it about Kendrick Lamar because Kendrick Lamar is clearly that dude when it comes to this rap space. Like, at one point right. in time, the industry, not me. The right. industry was calling right. Kendrick Lamar like the savior of rap. Like he was that yes. guy that was yes. making hip hop, hip hop yes. again. You get what I'm saying? Yes. And yes. I think, I think Drake should just leave Kanye West out of it. 
because one, yeah. Kanye West is that shit was corny and clout chasey. And I love you know I'm a Kanye West fan. That shit was trash. Leave that alone. <laughs> Future Rick Ross, no, you don't get a response because you niggas is eating off of me. I'm a I want Kendrick Lamar to drop. Mm-hmm. That's the only nigga that's on my level. It's mm-hmm. like when you outside. I'm I'm excited. I've been mm-hmm. waiting to do this for I've been waiting all week for this. It's mm-hmm. like when you outside, right? And like I don't know about y'all, but I got to a point where I knew I could fight. So anybody that I didn't feel threatened against, like, I'm not fighting you. Like, bro, go ahead, bro. You can do whatever you want. You call me all the name, bro. I'm cool. Like, I don't feel a threat. But the moment I feel like somebody might be threatening my space, oh, yeah, what's up? You get what I'm trying to say? I feel like, yeah, like, Kendrick is that dude to Drake. You know what I'm saying? So Drake, keep applying pressure. Yeah. Put, like I don't care what nobody say, niggas right. keep talking about you light skin, you white. Yeah, show them what a white man, show them that a white man can jump. What are you talking right. about? They say and, a white man can't jump. Well, he can. It's part three. Right. <laughs> I'm antagonizing you enough to where you can't avoid it. You right. can't drop like they saying he about to drop an album. You can't drop an album now and not address me because mm-hmm. all that shit you said before is gonna be out the window. Mm-hmm. Now your, your your sales is gonna go. Your sales ain't gonna go right. People ain't gonna want. Come, and guess what? Everywhere you go, it's gonna be a conversation. Why you ain't respond to your man's? Like you opened up the can. A whoop ass and started this shit. So now you gotta respond. Beautiful. I think it's beautiful technique on Drake's part. I one thousand percent agree with you that it's dogpiling at this point. Like, mm. and it's almost like, and you know what? I'm telling you again. I'm, I'm yo. This week, I'm giving you your flowers. Mm-hmm. I talked shit about you last Sunday, but I'm giving you your flowers today. Last week, you said this, yo. Everybody going at Drake makes Drake look bigger. Mm. Everybody mm-hmm. going at Drake is making Drake look like the man, and like everybody coming out just throwing rocks at the throne. It's starting to look, yo. When I saw Kanye, you know I sent you that shit quick as hell. I was like, this is some bullshit. I was like, yo, why are you even here? Mm. Why, why did you remix the beat? Like, yo, Kanye really when he sat, I got the clip of him sitting down with his boy. I ain't seen this nigga for real in a million years. All of a sudden, now he got a podcast, and now all of a sudden, Kanye, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How long he been doing that? Was that some new shit that he just started? I, I, and first, my first time saying it, bro. Everybody got a podcast. I ain't surprised. I, 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 <laughs> yo, the, 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 the Kanye West shit, bro. It's so disappointing because again, I love Kanye West, right? Through mm-hmm. all the BS, I still be loving him. But when I seen him drop that, it's like, bro, you chasing clout that you don't need, yeah. You just had a really good project, and um, mm-hmm. what was the name of the project? What well, uh, uh, Top Dollar Sign. Um, the, the, oh shit, a vultures, vultures, right? You just had a, a pretty dope project with vultures. Like you, you doing pretty good now. Like you, I think it debuted at number, or not debuted. It came, it, it came on top of the mm-hmm. charts at number one independently. Yeah. You ain't mm-hmm. really had nobody supporting you. You don't yep. need to chase this clout, right? And then you right. got and 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 what I, also what I want to say is niggas got to be careful with the shit they saying now because a lot of you niggas is on record sucking dick. For, excuse my ex language. Like not, not not like not literally. But physically. I know what you said. I know what you said. I mean, like 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 Kanye West. You're literally on drink champs, saying that Drake wrote your raps. You don't have no stake in this. And I already think, to be honest, I mean, again, I already jumped out the window, so I don't care. I don't think none of these niggas got stake in it. You feel me? Because, like Drake said, man, this nigga trying to jump in, and he damn near fifty. Every track you got on Billboard came from Drizzy. I'm just saying that's Rick Ross. Mm-hmm. Kendrick Lamar, another one, giving Drake his flowers. Like, a lot of these niggas don't really have no stain. And the only nigga that really, really got some stain ain't really the best rapper out of them. And that's Future. But even Mm. still, it's an argument that he's helped Future career go through the roof. But, hey, last time I said this, niggas was going crazy because there's a lot of Kendrick Lamar fans. You niggas are insane out of your mind. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Go ahead, I'm listening. Go ahead, bro. My bad, man. I told you I was waiting all week. I, I got a clip that that goes that supports the theory that Drake is getting paid off of everybody in the industry. Play that clip. I see. And the internet is speculating, does Drake own a piece of Gamma Music, a production company owned by Larry Jackson, a former Apple exec? And the real reason that all these rappers are coming at Drake is because he now owns a piece of all their music. Larry, a few years ago, when he was trying to figure his move out, his plan was, I want to go find the Avengers and create a new content mega 
house that nobody can fuck with. The theory continues that Drake is the Nick Fury of this musical Avengers and that his $400 million deal includes equity, publishing, rights, and that he's getting a piece of all these other musical acts. Makes a lot of sense why he's been pushing artists like Sexy Red and Four Bats and Meek Mill and Rick Ross who are signed to Gamma. Brilliant business move by Drake to become a rapper executive hybrid. But it sounds like the industry now thinks that Drake is no longer clearing samples, sending out cease and desist, and no longer giving out features unless he gets a piece of the action. So you can understand why all these rappers are saying you get a piece of my money and now you're also standing in the way of my career? Fuck you. It's a wild theory, but all the pieces fit. Now I'm Team Drake, I think it's more likely that these rappers all ganging up on him is a bunch of petty bullshit and they're just mad that Drake is a better businessman and higher atop the food chain than they are. But if Drake is being a sleazy businessman and he's screwing over other people's careers, particularly older acts that help put him on, then they are totally justified in their response. This is, this is real conversation right here. This is, this is money that play. So in that case, right, we can't ignore that. The last part, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's think about it. If he on some backhanded stuff, mm -hmm. that is corny. Again, I'm not, I'm I'm unbiased because we can't yes. ignore the fact that yeah, Drake helped put a lot of these guys on the top of their game. Right. I'm gonna be the first one to say it. Say it. I always been saying it. However, we can't ignore the contribution that they had on Drake as well. Right. It was. It, it went both ways. Yeah, Drake. The Drake feature put a lot of them on top of their games, but they did open the door, though. Think about right. like the Drake relationships, relationship to Atlanta, right? Relationship to Houston, to 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 uh to, to Texas, right? Just because he put them on top of their games, got the got the uh, the numbers going crazy, he was accepted because of the cosign from them as well. If mm -hmm. that makes sense, so. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, so if you now you turning your back and now you send it out cease and desist, now you're trying to just get a check, that's corny, bro, because we help put you on to we we help mm -hmm. put you in a position for you to be Drake. Right. Yeah, you and help sustain your career for over the you know, I mean, I'm I'm just agreeing with you. The, everybody that that he allowed that they allowed Drake to jump on a record, as much as he's helping them, they're helping him. Yeah. There's a symbiotic back and forth that's happening between both sides. Yeah. And like, this is the other component. I think th what this gentleman is saying has relevance at the end. I don't think Drake can stop anybody's money. Like if you got publishing coming in, you got publishing. If you got your show money coming in, you got your show money. You know what I mean? At the end of the day. All right. So Drake don't want to do a record with you. or don't want to clear nothing. That's not stopping you from eating. You just need to learn how to not have Drake involved in whatever you got going on, man. Like, you know, but, I think Drake gave away a lot of stuff at the beginning of his career. I heard he signed bad deals. There was a lot of stuff going on in the beginning. He took a lot of L's, helped a lot of people, and didn't probably get money up front. Now he's in a space where it's like, bro, nah, I'm not about to keep being that, give you a free verse and give you all this no more. No, nigga, I want to get paid. And it's not, is it really sleazy to fight you and claw your way to the top and then now tell niggas, yo, not only do I want to get what I'm worth, I want to get what you owe me from the back. Hey, it's, not, bro. It's, not, it's not sleazy, but even uh, I kind of mentioned it before we even started. Mm -hmm. That's the price you play when you don't set your boundaries, right? And that's that's just real life. I don't want to get too deep into it, right? But what mm -hmm. happened is if we're so used to it, and this is the world, you can say yes a million times, but the moment you say no, you're the worst person in the world. Mm -hmm. That's just what we, we see that every day with relatives, with family, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not making it okay. But I can see, again, if, if he's right, I don't know that theory, but let's just hypothetically, if he's right, I can see him all of a sudden change what, 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 what we would look at as changing up, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now I need, a, I need a bag. No, I need this percentage. No, it can't be like this. It got to be like that. When you're not used to that, we all are, we, we, unfamiliarity, unfamiliarity is always frustrating. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like when you, when you're not used to something and you're not, you, you haven't seen it, it's like, mm -hmm. it catches you off guard and you don't like it. So I can understand that. Does it make it okay? No. And then everybody else is just a, is a, just a, is a, is just the domino effect. So yeah, mm -hmm. it might it might be an issue with future. It might have been an issue with uh, French Montana. But the moment Rick Ross see okay, future and Metro Boomin, this is a perfect time for me to hop in. Then Kanye mm -hmm. West see oh, it's a perfect time to hop in and, and, and jump on the train. That's what makes mm -hmm. it corny. If it was just a future thing, it's like cool. You get what I'm trying to say, like, or or, right. or just the Kendrick Lamar thing. 
It's the like, more people jump in, the less relevant everybody's claim is. Yes. The more like that's the point you're making. It's like, yo, if we if future just need to get his shit off and it was just them going back and forth, be done. But everybody coattail riding and don't really have a justifiable excuse. Yo, you didn't clear the record for French Montana, so you need to go on a this record run like and then now you got to saturate social media same thing with kanye we've been known y'all ain't fucking with each other now you got to do the official disc record like i feel like once again it's dogpiling y'all look like dickheads for doing it and like it's it's just super crazy man you know what i mean also it's like bro everybody else again i don't know the future situation i'm sorry bro everybody else is just corny because you guys are on wax saying how much you fuck with Drake, bro. Rick Ross, you were also on Drink Champs talking about how um how great it is to make a song with Drake. Cool. Mm-hmm. This is supposed to be your friend. Clearly, that's what that's what we thought, right? If I sent out, if if, if your friend sent out a cease and desist, you unfollow me. No, nigga, you clout chasing because you know the blog's gonna pick it up. You could have called me like, yo, what's this about? That's what real like. That's what like, bro. All these rap beats, bro, we got to take it with a grain of salt. Because everybody fighting to be a real nigga doing some whole shit. It just is what it is. Like, how you a real nigga, but you still doing some girl shit? Bro, I, make it make sense to me. So if if, if we standing on man time, right? Because we, I brought up man time with J. Cole. So let me bring up man time with Rick Ross, right? If we standing on man time, if that's your man, as a man, I'm calling you. I'm picking up the phone. Like, bro, like, what's going on with you and French? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I, we don't really like that. You know what I'm saying? You ain't about right. to just diss a nigga like, now I'm again, I don't know, but Drake probably finding out why he unfollowed him with the world. That's the worst mm-hmm. thing in the world. That's corny. Mm-hmm. Like, what are we doing? We standing on my time or not? But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But you know, at the end of the day, it's a great, I think we're in a great place in this battle. Uh, I think Drake is once again proving that he can handle whatever y'all throw at him. And it's gonna and it, and it rolls off his back. It's no issues. He's, I mean, I think he's great. And until, and I'm I'm with the rest of the world, until Kendrick drops a response, I'm done with this whole beef. So Ross, you can stop showing me more real estate. Stop showing me your cars. Stop, stop telling Drake, you know, you can stop going back and forth with him on public platforms because I stopped giving a shit a while ago. Let me ask you this though. Go ahead. Do you think Kendrick Lamar dropped something that makes us second think or have a second thought about everything that Drake did up until now because I asked that question let me let me let me let me perfect I asked that question because I was just listening to W Freestyle W Freestyle was a really good song mm-hmm. but Pusha T came so hard it kind of mm-hmm. make made us push W Freestyle to the back but if you listen to it again like he came hard on W Freestyle like that was a good mm-hmm. song Mm-hmm. And it was it was a good diss in my opinion, mm-hmm. but Pusha T came so hard it was like, what W free so mm-hmm. it made us forget it. So I'm warning, I'm asking, do you think even the chat? Do y'all think that Kendrick Lamar has the ability to drop something so profound that it make us say, oh, I don't know. That's what makes this complicated, cause. <clears throat> This is the power of Drake. I'm starting to I'm starting to come around, man. I'm I'm like, can Kendrick do it? Can, can and, and everything you just said is exactly where my concern is. You you know, Drake has set such a high bar on what needs to happen to turn the tide. Can can Kendrick turn the tide at this point? Can we get a truly fire response that can stream? That can go in the club, that can dominate spaces, and I not- that stream though, because that's why I said because because Pusha T record, the son of Adam didn't really stream. It wasn't like something that you stream. It ain't something that you listen to in your car. I don't think so. But it was that. something that was yeah. like it was something just direct and and, and it's right. Yeah, it's right. It changed impactful. our perception of that man. It really put him in a space where it was like, yo, what the hell? You know what I mean? Like, you, you, can Kendrick change perception with Drake? Mm. I'm I'm hoping so for Kendrick's sake. Wait, I think somebody said, this is a great point. Um, William, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but it said, if Pusha T, if Pusha took three weeks to respond, W Freestyle would still be alive. Okay. However, like, I get that. 
That's a fair statement. But wasn't Drake on um on tour or something? No, no, no. I think Meek Mill was on Nicki Minaj's tour at the time. Right, yeah. and Drake yep. kept coming at Meek Mill for 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 trying to respond, like even on back to back. Right, so my my only reason to saying that is, Drake, you took two weeks to respond because you was on tour. We get mm -hmm. it, but you can't be the same. Like you was the same one who was saying, "Bro, I waited four days, nigga. Where y'all at? You took two mm -hmm. weeks. So let's not be. I don't want to get. I don't want to get our mind clouded because of recency you know like sometimes like recency is a, a cloud your judgment so let's not forget that drake took two weeks i'm just being fair here what yeah so, and at, at the end of the day the the response is important not the time in which the response happened you know what i mean i don't care if kendrick takes a month i don't care if the now Drake is going to try to make it seem like it's important that the that the response isn't within the album and that if he responds in the album, then, oh, this is just a market employee. It doesn't fucking matter if the response is impactful. Now, mm -hmm. if the response is some bullshit, then I'm going to be like, all right, nigga, I'm done. I, I <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Now, I, I'm going to jump in here to the chat. Uh, yes, you know what I'm saying? Drake uh, may not be able to handle Pusha, but Pusha has not jumped into the ring yet. And I feel like Push is going to wait until a more appropriate time. I feel like this is just a clown fest at this point. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to get too far down in that. Drake also sending tickets to Ross's ex. All right, par for the course. It's not that serious. Shorty been out on every platform trying to get some attention because she wants to tell all of that nigga business. And we just don't give a fuck. Like, <laughs> Ross's ex has been, you know, baby mother. She been wilding in the streets. So, so let, me, let me ask you this then. Okay. It's chaotic, it's chaotic right now. If Kendrick Lamar waits, let's say, until he dropped his project. Right, right. Are we upset at Drake if he don't respond then? What you mean? Like in 48 hours or like a week or something like that? No, like, let's say, I don't know when Kendrick Lamar is planning on dropping his project. But let's say he's planning on dropping it next month. And let's right. say he waits to put the disc on his project. Let's right. say it is a marketing thing. Right. It's a month later. Do we care if Drake then responds to that Kendrick Lamar diss? Yeah, I'm cool with that. No, because you cool with what? If he responds or we I'm don't cool, I'm cool. No, no, I'm cool if Drake takes time to respond. <clears throat> Drake has already set the standard at this point. We know he's going to respond. If he doesn't, all right, let me tell you like this. If Kendrick responds and then Drake doesn't respond after that, I don't know. It depends. To me, it depends on the Ken like if Kendrick drop a weak ass verse, which I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening. But if Drake, I mean, if Kendrick drops a weak ass verse and Kendrick doesn't respond, I'm like, all right, I get it. You know what I'm saying? Because once you won, you won. If a nigga try, it's like, it's like you pop the shit out. Uh, a nigga slap you. You pop the shit out of the nigga, and then he try to hit you back and misses, and you just like, oh, and then like, all right, now he crying. There's no point to keep beating down on a nigga that know he beat. So you right. just kind of let it go. Now, if Kendrick come back with some real shit and it's impactful and then he pulls that same shit he pulled with Pusha, dog, the whole world will explode. Nah, you don't be doing that shit no more. Like, after that whole situation with him and Pusha, you cannot not respond to Kendrick because there's no violence involved in this. Mm. So, like, you know what I mean? So, like, this is really about skill and title. So you have to fight. You got to... That's like... <clears throat> You get into the first, y'all do, do a boxing match. You win the first fight. I mean, uh, you lose the first fight. You win the second one. And then the nigga that won the first round want to get his rematch. You got to get a nigga to rematch. Mm. I only <laughs> ask that only ask that because it seems like Drake is trying to get this out of the way. And I think even X said this. Drake is trying to get this out of the way because he came from, he came from off a big tour, right? Multiple right. had that. And now right. he's like, man, I'm going to engage in this until we can set. I want to settle this now. Kendrick Lamar might not want to settle this right now and at the time. He he probably don't want to do it on Drake's time. He want to do it on his time. So I'm wondering, like, if Kendrick Lamar responds a whole month later and Drake is over it at that time, it's like the fan in me will want Drake to respond. But I will also understand because it's like, bro, when I was trying to get a response out of you, you didn't want to respond. Now you want to respond a, a, a month later. My, I'm mentally somewhere else now. So my question comes down to why is it so important to get this out of the way? 
like is he planning on putting another album out is you know what i mean is he about to do drake casinos i, think, I don't i don't what I mean so I why is this, so this is something that again drake always has his ear to the streets and this is this is why his fans love him in my perspective right mm -hmm. because he, he always does what the fans want so okay. having said that drake you understand this has been a feud for maybe 13 years now right i mm -hmm. think 10, 10 at least 10 years like 10 years yeah. right yeah. so now it's like it's here it's here yeah. let's let's get it out the way so the people can judge you feel me that's okay. why i think he's it's like it's kind of like anxiety it's kind of like uh like what, what joe said is giving them blue balls you know what i'm saying so it's like when you when you, you're so horny you want to get you want to get it out the way you want to get this over with you know what i'm saying because the more you wait the, 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 the more it hurt the harder it gets you get what i'm trying to say pause no point intended but i mean for real like it's like the, it's like the the more you wait you get what I'm saying? So like, I think I think it's I like one of those. Now. Drake has blue balls, and you <laughs> sit here trying to explain this. He got having blue balls. <laughs> I, think, I mean, listen, man. Like, I think that's probably what it is. So it's like he's probably just anxious. Like, man, let's get it on. We here now. I've been waiting. We here now. Let's do it. I'm still. Uh, my my expectations are we still have two or three more records to go back and forth between these two guys. I feel like now and then. What I'm waiting for are the teams to get involved. I think what came, what made this last seven days corny is that we didn't see the teams respond. We seen completely pe people that are completely outside, like, you know, Kanye and Kendrick ain't homies like that. You know what I mean? So it's right. like, what the fuck you involved? Like all these random niggas that got their own little petty beefs with Drake all out here trying to dish it. I haven't seen the team step in and be like, hey, this is my man's. Like nobody's necessarily coming to Kendrick's defense. People are just stating whatever their issue is. No, nobody so is coming to Kendrick's de defense. They just coming to... <laughs> they just coming to... Uh, Kick up dust. They just yeah. throwing dirt on the party Talk like yo. about Drake. Like they, they not, they, right. they're not doing this to defend Kendrick. They doing this to just jump on a bandwagon. Like man, get off niggas. Yeah. Nuts. yeah, right, exactly. Like you know what I'm saying. Like let's 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 gang up and 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 let's do what we supposed to do. So like like I said, Baby Keem need to come out and do his thing, and the other niggas need to come out and do that. You know, some OVO niggas that had some projects come out. Party next door need to come out. You know what I mean? Like let's do it. You know I what I mean? Saying this, and I'm going to continue to say this. Little Wayne, I need you stepping for your guy. Step in Boy. for your guy. Well, stop calling Godzilla out from the mountains, bro. Like, let that nigga kick it. Like, nah, no, man. no, so that's so like unfair. you, my dog. You, you, my that's dog, unfair. and you really gonna sit back and just watch this. That's mad unfair, nigga. That's overkill. That's un yo, that's that's disrespectful. So you don't think so? You don't think listen, listen to the names. I need you to hear this. Mm -hmm. ASAP Rocky. Mm -hmm. Rick Ross. I forgot about ASAP. Uh, hold on, ASAP Rocky. Rick mm -hmm. Ross. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. Kanye West. Mm -hmm. You don't think that's overkill? It's, you don't, the but, Metro Boomin. No, I mean, I ain't even. I, I ain't named Metro Boomin because he's not a rapper, but and he's mm -hmm. not on those guys' level. Correct. Rick Ross, ASAP Rocky, Kendrick Lamar, Future. You don't think that's overkill for one person? All right, on. and okay. you saying Little Wayne is overkill? Like, 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 I got you, I got you. I, I, you know what? You put it like that. <laughs> Call in the cracking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, what the fuck you want me to do? You know, at this point, I, I'll, I'll concede. I'll concede your point. I didn't think about it like that, but yes. All right, from this um, point on, I think. Uh, Let's get Wayne. Uh, hold up. You don't. You, you sure you don't want to do a lyric breakdown of Kanye West's response? <laughs> I mean, we can if you want to. No, no, I am fucking playing. I do not want to hear that fucking record no more. I just said shit one time, and I was like, "This is horrible." Yo, it's just crazy because all of these dudes that's coming at Drake are really legends, and Drake said this when he was talking about uh Common before. Mm -hmm. he, on state scheming, he said it bothers me when the guys get to acting like the broads. Mm -hmm. I guess every team don't come complete like niggas like us. Like I'm just saying. So it's this is just all these dudes are respectively guys in rap. Future, That's Rick right. Ross, yeah, Kanye West, yeah, 
They all we all beefing over some corny shit. I mean, that, that, that's what it seemed like to me. It, it, nah, ain't no scene. This is all corny. There is no justifiable nothing. Nobody slept with nobody wife. Nobody killed nobody man's. Nobody took nobody money. And, and let's it, go through this. Let's go straight into it. Speaking of that, bro, what's up with all these men beefing over, ho- bro? I know I, we should know you better. No, we should know better. When it comes to these, you don't, don't, you don't want to have this conversation, bro. Why you say that? Because yo, half of your niggas be in the club every week, hoeing it up. No, I'm just, <laughs> no, like, but like, yo, even my niggas, like, no, I'm saying, yeah, we understand that. Like, when it comes to these beefs, historically, it's always about money or girls. I get that, but facts. I don't like the. Putting it on wax thing, like this Chris Brown and Quavo thing, right? Like you saying that you essentially you saying that you smashed Sweetie while he was still with her. It's like, bro, like we like players don't no, be on that. That's that's a little extra. That's like, a little. We don't extra. be on that. It's like, bro, like. But in, am I missing in, something? Or maybe that's just the dis- you want to get disrespectful, so I'm gonna go there. Well, that, but I also have to agree. Chris Brown said at the beginning of his record. I'm off my rocker. I'm fucking crazy. So, like, when he said that, I fully agree with this nigga. Something is wrong with Chris Brown. Even him coming out the way he came out, talking about he banging blood and all this, I was like, this boy But now he's banging blood, though. Chris Brown. True, but you in your mid-30s now. You got deals. You independent. I'm like, yo, can't we just just wear the red? We don't got to talk about it no more. But uh, in response to your first question, I definitely feel like this has everything to do with pride. When everybody pretty much got the same level of money, what's the only thing that you have to brag about now? You can't brag about a Lamborghini. He got a Lamborghini. Can't brag about a boat. He got a boat. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now it's about who has access to what we all covet. And in that space, the only thing all these rich dudes really give a damn about is it's a vagina. Yeah. So now it's all about who locking down who. Oh, I locked down her. She mine now. I locked down her. She mine. You know what I mean? Dudes ain't new enough but building harems of hoes. I hate to say it. And I'm not trying to disrespect these ladies. But a lot of them really be on that. Hey, if you fly me out, you put some money in my pocket, mm-hmm. you can get what you want. So like, I, I. but going back to your point to kind of actually reinforce your point, What's the point of arguing about a chick that's always going to go to the highest bidder? If you know that she done been with this dude, like, yo, the list, and once again, not trying to disrespect, sweetie. Like, I think she's a beautiful girl. Hey, look like she can cook like crazy. But, like, there's a list. There's a literal list. I don't list. think it look like she can cook. She's beautiful. <laughs> I don't think it like, but that's just my opinion. She's, <laughs> she's been connected, intimately been connected with little baby, Chris Brown, Quavo, uh, one of Diddy's sons, YG, Offset, Keith Powers, Idris Elba, Roddy Rich, and Michael B. Jordan. She's oh, been like, so. Once again, when I see stuff like this, and I'm like, damn, oh, we bro, we can't like, do that though. We we can't do that. We got some liberals out here. We can't do that. Woman, their choice, their body, their choice. No, no, no. <laughs> she can do whatever she wants with as many men or women as she wants to, or transsexuals, whatever her preference is, she can sleep with a tree. The point I'm making is tree, how, how right, how prideful can you be about saying that you because at the person. end of the day, uh-huh. that was your woman at a point of time and betrayal hurts. Like when you with somebody, you think they're you're only you're, you're with them because you think they're only with you, right? Right. And that can hurt your feelings. So I get that. I mean, hey, we turn, well, we see niggas turn hoes into housewives every day. This ain't nothing new. And this goes back to my original point of the reason why you need to keep your relationships private is because you don't want your relationship, you don't want the love of your life to end up becoming a public piece for people to move around a chessboard. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Now everybody know that you with her. So now, look, number one, everybody trying to get at her now. Number two, everybody want to move her out to the front so they can say, well, I hit her once or she was my little thing in high school. Now, you you know what I'm saying? I skeeted on her. It's like, man, that stuff is rugged, bro. Like, Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. First of all, did you, did you, like, did you like the record? Yes. Okay. And cool. at first I was mad because my man's was like, yo, he was putting mad sauce on this shit. Yo, Chris murdered Quavo. He's yeah, never coming back. Yeah, was, yeah. And I was like, I'm like, because I'm a Quavo fan. I'm a Migos fan. So I was oh just like, 
Yo, nah, come on, bro. So then he like, li- I'm listening to the record. He played it back again. I'm like, fuck. All right. Yeah, Chris went off. The I, aggression, I the, think, the, the flips, everything was, was crazy on this record. I think that's the number one diss out right now. I think he goes, I think it goes Chris Brown diss. <laughs> What's the name of the song? What's the name of Chris Brown's song? You bugging right I think now. It was Chris uh, Brown. I think it's Ross and then it's Drake. When it comes to this, this is. I'm not talking about right. this song. Like, because we can look at it two different ways. When it comes to disrespectful dissing somebody. Right, right. Shit, he put the dissing disrespectful. You get what I'm saying? So, Chris mm-hmm. Brown, Rick Ross shit was really disrespectful. I feel like Drake shit was hard. Like, it was fire. I don't think it topped Chris Brown when it comes to disrespect, though. The joint is called Weakest Link. And it's not on streaming, so we can play it. So I'm, a, I'm about to pull this joint up right now so we can play this joint. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. Kanye West one. I don't want to hear that shit. Why do you want to hear that bullshit, yo? Stop, I mean, yo. I, I don't. I don't really. The people, <laughs> the people probably ahead. want to hear it, bro. Like. Oh, my God. Okay. So, so if you had to rank the disses, what, what would you rank them and why? All right, cool. So, all right, which disses get to qualify for this conversation? Let's ask. I'm all the ones that are out right now. Oh God, there's a thousand of them out no, right now. No, not like mm-hmm. all the disses in the world. I'm saying like. No, no, right, 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 right. All right. So I would put. I all right. First of all, I feel like the Drake one is still number one for me, and I'm gonna say why. It moves the needle on public perception. And it's a great back the fuck up off of me. I ain't playing with you niggas. Okay. Chris Brown will be number two because Chris Brown is responding out of just anger. There's no strategy in it. He's just trying to destroy this nigga. Period. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. you know what I'm saying? Fuck you. And like, it, yo, you can hear it in the first couple of bars, nigga. Yo, when I see you, it's on. Like, this is a real beef. This isn't strategy beef. This isn't, all right, I'm trying to be the best in the game. This is, nigga, you gave me that bullshit-ass diss record called Chicken Nugget, and then <laughs> I'm about to let you know, nigga, I'm going to fuck you up. Like, you really think it's a game? Like, And that's the reason why I love this so much is because, like, Chris was like, yo, nigga. And then at the end, you got body by singing, nigga. I fell out of my chair, nigga. I was like, oh! All right, so you got you got Drake, then Chris Brown. Then I got Chris Brown. Um... Then I'm gonna put Kendrick third. I'm gonna put what, Kendrick like third. That? Yeah, I'm gonna put like that third. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put Ross fourth. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, then I'm going to put and I, I'll put whoever else behind that. It's so there's got that many disc records. Oh, like hip hop is crazy. Like, yeah, shout out a lot to, we gotta say shout out to Future and Metro Woman for making uh hip hop great again because Facts. they started all this. shit. Oh, and I want to put the I want to put the AI disc behind the behind the uh behind them niggas. Like, I love you know the AI disc, but let me. I'm, I'm AI about to, fire. Let's play it. All right, here we go, Chris Breeze. Bro, we're crazy. That shit is disrespectful as hell, bro. Oh, yo, man. Andre Andre Robinson said, "I think CB is number one." Ye came out with the like that remix at number two. Drake is number three. Play Kanye he- West. Go ahead, man. Play Kanye West. You got it. Play it. Play it. Y'all is so on some Kanye bull crap. I, all right, I, I got you. I got you. Oh, you got it. Uh, yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna take number a second. Uh, I got man. it. I got it up. Let's see. Okay, go ahead. Let me see, man. That's what it is. But I did do this. Uh, this nigga didn't even. That's crazy. Let's see, man. We had to get the hool- we had to get the hooligans a pussy nigga out. Yo, dot, I got you. I ain't gonna lie. This beat hard as hell, though. This beat is fire, though. <laughs> Yo, come on, bro. That's not hard. No, it's cool. I feel like it's the cool. Beat alone is fire. I I think it's corny. I don't like him doing it, but I like I like it. If that makes sense, like I like it. Yeah. I hate that he did it, but number three, number three, number four, number three. Number four, number three and four. It's in that. Ooh. I like and, and, and Andre. I like the energy too. Traps, trap network, trap set network. Yo, yeah, definitely that. I mean, like, um, 
I said, respect J. Cole get the, make the pussy dry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but well, I don't think it's funny because y'all don't make me happy dissing. I'm not dissing J. Cole, but I'm not playing no J. Cole when I'm trying to get laid unless it's an earthy girl that's really into him. Like, come on, bro. That's not the playlist. Bro, that's I'm not, not even gonna lie to you though. I don't think he wrote the shit. I don't think he wrote it either. I like I, I don't even think he wrote it. I think Actually, somebody else wrote it for him. I don't think it was that complicated that he didn't write it. I mean, he could have he could have wrote this. This wasn't no like deep ass shit. But when the last time have we seen Kanye West rap like this? I feel like when uh, on Vultures, what did I say when I when I listened to Vultures? I said, "Yo, honestly, I liked everything about Vultures except for Kanye West rapping." This just sounds different. It, it doesn't sound like the Kanye West that we're been we've been listening to for the last few years. It, to me. <laughs> This is Kanye focusing on being a rapper. This isn't Kanye trying to be a creative. Like when you think, when I think album mode for Kanye, I'm thinking of an artist trying to paint a picture. Okay. He's got a vision and he's executing a vision. So like whatever he's got to sing, like if his whole concept is, oh, I want to sing on this or I want to do this. I want That's what the album is about. It's got to focus. Like this is, yo, this nigga getting on my nerves. Oh, oh they doing this? Or oh, let me jump on here and, 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 and show my ass real quick. That's Kanye doing Kanye. The problem, the thing is, is that people haven't seen Kanye do this in a while because he really ain't been connected to rap like that. Okay. Like when he was with Rockefeller and them niggas in the street and it's all about rap records, then he's giving you, that's what he's trying to do. I'm trying to give y'all the best rap records because I'm surrounded by the best rappers. But now that Kanye has kind of risen above just rap music and he's, he's a worldly guy, he's going to give you more of like a, a global sound, a global perspective, you know, but also giving you some of the hip hop roots that he came out of. But Kanye's bigger than rap. I think people just don't understand that. Same thing with Con uh, same thing with Drake to a certain point. That's what the point of that whole uh, 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 dubstep. I ain't gonna call it a dubstep album, but that whole you know house music album that Drake did. That's him trying to rise above yeah. just being a. Yeah, you like know that. what I'm saying. Yo, I know I didn't. I know I said. Maybe not talk about this, but I'm sorry. I was in my feelings before the before the stream start. Can we talk oh, about boy. last night for a second? Okay, let's talk about last night. I don't know what happened last night, but what happened? Devin Haney. I got secondhand embarrassment from yesterday. First of all, I want to show y'all something. This made me hot. Let me show y'all something. Hold up, hold up. This pissed me off, bro. I literally put in the chat. I don't know if y'all can see this. The fuck? I ain't lie. A thousand of 200 might be worth a bet. What? I said, I ain't going to lie. A thousand dollars off of 200 might be worth a bet. Niggas got rich last night. I know niggas got rich last night, bro. The odds for Ryan Garcia going the distance was insane. I literally put in the chat because I like I said I, I like I said Devin Haney was going to win right I that, I said that I, I got a back mm -hmm. cut I got to apologize I was wrong mm -hmm. I thought Devin Haney was going to win but I was looking at the mm -hmm. odds and I'm like man you can you, 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 you can put up a couple dollars and really win like imagine if you would have put up a thousand dollars like you probably would won like mm -hmm. five plus thousand you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. but yo last night really gave me secondhand embarrassment because. I was one of the ones like rooting for Devin Haney. I was one of the ones saying Devin Haney is underrated. Granted, I think he's trying to bite off more than he could chew when he's talking about trying to fight Tank. That's way, that's, you don't want them problems, especially after last night. But mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I think that would be a good fight. I think Devin Haney has proven himself. He, he didn't fought some people, right? Mm -hmm. However, last night, bro, to let somebody who didn't take the fight serious at all, like Ryan Garcia ain't even take the, he, he drank a beer at the scale, that's top, that's next level disrespect. I just want to play some highlights real quick, man. Hold up, man. Please, this, I'm with you. This is crazy. This is insane. Hold up. I saw them in the interview and him tapping his leg and dancing around and shit. <laughs> and Haney talking about, I don't think he's really serious. Look at this. Let me, uh, I'm a, this is crazy, man. Yo, look, he like he it's like he can't get up. It's like 
He trying, but he can't. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Damn. Damn, we got, we got the noodle legs, player. Look, bro, it's like he that's he's that's a dead body. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. It's some fresh ass clothes. Yo, this is cool. It, it, bro, the referee, bro. I don't know if you watched. Did you watch the fight? No, I didn't get a chance to watch it, but bro, the I heard it. yo, so it could have it would have been 10 times worse for Devin Haney if the referee wasn't on the side. Like the referee was kept like breaking it up, like trying to trying to protect him from going down the scene. Like, yo, mm -hmm. this shit. I'm I'm a, since you ain't watching, I'm a, I'm gonna a play, I'm gonna play the highlights for you. Hold up. What? My bad. I thought. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go. Let's go back. This is crazy. All right, boxers. We went over instructions earlier. As a reminder, obey my commands. Up. The first round. Oh my! Oh my! Oh yeah! This is crazy. <laughs> wow. Kid Garcia stunned the boxing world. Devin the Dream Haiti is going through a nightmare now. As frequently as it needs to happen. Oh, he's going to go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. God damn! What a show! What an event! You know, this was built as the water match between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, fight number seven. After this, I want to see eight and nine. He's counting his man, bro. This is crazy, yo. So. All right, this is my question. Being that I'm not as into boxing as you are, why is King Garcia not somebody that? Why was he? Why was this so grossly um, mismatched? Mis yeah, well, mismatched, and, and then Mitch, like you said, if everybody was voting on Haney and nobody was thinking of Garcia, how the hell did this happen? Because Garcia. So the thing about this fight, in my perspective, again, I'm like, the, I'm not the 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 biggest boxing analyst. I'm not a boxing analyst at all. It's just, just fan perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Ryan Garcia, to me, it looks like he won this fight off of pure, just, just like a street mentality, like, um, basic instincts. Like just, mm -hmm. if, if it was a fight, he won it off of basic instincts. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's how it felt. Like he just right. went in and dominated on some, like, I'm bigger than you. I hit harder than you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm just better than you. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas though, Devin Haney is super like mechanical with his shit. Like he's a good, he got good technique. So gotcha. usually when we look at things like that, technique wins. Like when you are right. he's super like professional or he's super um uh, disciplined, right? Like mm -hmm. if he worked like he he's super professional with his boxing shit. He's mechanical. You know what I'm saying? He's sharp. And, and though, it like he kept trying to find. He kept trying to find his openings, and the dude just wasn't giving him that. Get there. He just, he's just get, he's been super aggressive. Go ahead, go ahead. Ah, hold up, hold up. Maybe, but so to answer your question, I think because Devin is super mechanical, he's super like strategic, like he he's really like sharp with his boxing game. Devin Haney has a lot of flaws, and when Devin, mm -hmm. I mean not Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia has a lot of flaws. In fact, that Tank actually exposed his flaws before the fight. He always said, "Bro, you all you got is that hook," because like. Tank is a really good boxer, and I think Tank needs to get more respect for his boxing IQ. And because a lot of people always call Tank just this knockout boxer, and that's clearly not true from his previous fights. He's a good boxer. Mm -hmm. So, having said that, Tank was like, yo, you only got that hook. You only got that hook. And it was so bad that in the, in the fight, he got knocked out off of Tank countering one of his hooks. Right? Mm -hmm. So, Ryan Garcia isn't as, like, mechanical is is so bad that if Ryan was to get disciplined, like if Ryan had De Devin Haney discipline, he probably would be a problem. But you mm -hmm. see, up into this fight, how how he was carrying himself, he came mm -hmm. overweight, like he ain't taking serious. Imagine if he took it serious, right? Yeah. Even even him fighting, he kind of looked all over the place. Mm -hmm. My perspective, where Devin Haney lost, was he tried to get out of his body. Even in the press press conference, he was like, "Meet me in the middle of the ring, Devin." We all know that that's not your fight. 
Mm. You know that you don't want that fight. It looked like he really came to the pressure of trying to knock Ryan Garcia out. And Ryan Garcia came in as swinging. So Devin yeah. might have thought he had a chance. This is just from my perspective. Right, right, right. In the moment he did that, you fucked yourself over. Like, mm. Ryan, I think uh, Andre said this. He, you're absolutely right. Ryan mentally beat the shit out of Devin Haney because Devin Haney wanted to get that knockout so bad, and that's not your fight, bro. That's not mm. your fight to fight. This was embarrassing. It's, it, was a, it was bad for Devin Haney because he already don't sell fights. Niggas, like, mm. he, he, people already think he's, he, he's giving off this fake persona, right? He's not, like, authentic. He's not genuine with how he acts, how he reacts to try to, to, to for the buildup of the fights. A lot of things he do is just so he can get a fight, right? That's how it looks. It's like, right. you're not no street dude. Like, you don't, like, bro, you keep pushing niggas. Like, when he pushed Lomachenko, to me, that was, like, the most corny thing to do because Lomachenko is not one of them dudes that's, like, trying to get in your face. Like, he respectable right. dude. Like, he like, let's fight. Right. He pushed him. The nigga ain't he do nothing to you. Like, bro, you, like, I used to like Devin, like, nah, I used to. I used to like Devin Haney as a boxer and as a person. More mm -hmm. recently, I was liking him more as a boxer, right? Because mm -hmm. I feel like he lost some credibility when he pushed Lomachenko for nothing. It was corny. So me personally, I'm like, man, Devin Haney is going to beat this guy. Like, I'm that because he's more, he's more, he's just a better boxer, a technique. Right. But seeing him get outside of his body like this, it wasn't Devin Haney-ish, but I know a lot of people would say it is because people already don't like him anyway because they think they think he's just all talk, no bite. You know what I'm saying? Like, he barely got the one on Lomachenko. He beat um, Gambosa twice, but that's not like Gambosa. Like, he's not really the best boxer. Like, people, you know what I'm saying? So people already challenged him. I thought he was really like that. So this loss for Devin Haney, I don't know if he could. Can I? You know what I'm saying? Because he's been trying to get big fights. And niggas don't want to tank, don't want to fight him because, like, he's like, bro, you're not bringing no money to the table. Why am I mm -hmm. fighting? You know what I'm saying? So, like, it's just, it, 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 it's, this was bad. This is bad. I feel me. like them throwing this fight the way they, I mean, all right, let me stop. I feel like there's a potential that this fight could have been purposely thrown because this has a dual purpose. This sets up a, a King Garcia versus Tank fight. No, what? No, hell no. That'll no. sell. Cause this sold. No, and that's no, an upset. Bro, we don't want to no, see that. It's gonna no. sell. I don't know. I don't want to see that. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Tunnel vision. No, you said no, bro. Ryan Garcia haven't always been a a, a great fight. We seen him get knocked out. We seen niggas expose him a couple times, bro. I didn't so say the, he was. I didn't say no, I'm he not was. Talking to you. I'm not talking. I'm talking. I'm oh, talking. Oh, 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 right. I got a tunnel. Like. That's not necessarily true. And, bro, he was swinging wild. As, I don't know. Maybe I'll watch it again. But I don't think he's the best technical fighter, bro. Tank embarrassed him because Tank showed he's a better fighter. Like, Tank mm -hmm. is... I feel like niggas don't give Tank the, the, the respect, the boxing IQ he deserves. No, I, that, I agree with that. But... I, and I don't want to see no rematch to Ryan... Chat, am I lying? I don't know. Y'all asking me because, like... I might be speaking too fast. I don't want to see a Tank-Ryan rematch. I don't need to see that. I'm just looking at the potential business of it. It's a great way to, you know, Ryan and Ryan and, and, and tank. And then look, Haney gets to do the road of redemption story. It's just like WWF. I don't think we care about you no know, redemption from Devin Haney. Box I, think, I think if he changes his attitude, he retrains up, win a few smaller joints, come back, you'll love him again. That's all it takes. That's all it takes is learn how to act right, or he like he playing the heel on purpose, pushing niggas, doing dumb shit. That just sound like some WWF shit, you know. All he got to do is be like, "Yo, after I got my ass beat in the last fight, you know, what I'm saying I got to get right with the Lord. I get married, you know. Uh, yo, me get right with Allah, Halom do Shalat, all that, and then boom, 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 boom. Now we can start doing right. People start falling in love with him, build him up." And then, like, bam, like, because if he's got all the essentials that's necessary to be a legendary fighter, the only thing he just needs is some PR, needs a PR turn, and he needs some good publicity. And one of the best ways to build up publicity is get your, the shit beat out of your ass. Everybody be like, that's what you deserve. And then you fight your way back and become a redemption story. Everybody loves a redemption story. 
So I feel like this has dual benefit. You got you got a long you got you got I got a long shot guy that I can put on a road to redemption where I can make a bunch of money doing smaller fights over the next three to five years. And then I also got the guy that just won the now. It's going to sell tickets for a tank fight because there's going to be some people that's going to be like, yo, Garcia could make it a good fight. He might win. He won with Haney. So all he got to do is get a little focus and stop drinking beer at the way in and we good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, tank going to talk shit. Garcia going to talk shit. I feel like it's a good conversation. Now, tank going to want a gigantic, ginormous bag, but I feel like it'll sell. Because the conversation is, will it sell tickets? And Tank ain't going to turn down a high selling, high ticket selling event. I'm just mad because we was root. I was rooting for you, w- <laughs> Yo, I wanted me personally. I would have loved for Devin to beat Ryan Garcia. I would have loved for him to continue to rise to the top. So eventually, because I think, um, shout out to my guy Ty. We was in the chat, and Ty made it. Clear, he, he made a great point because I'm like, bro, I think Devin should fight Tank. Like, I want to see Tank fight somebody that you know got the belts in. Like, I want to see him fight right. one of them big fights. And my man Ty was like, bro, you gotta understand, it'd be taking years for these big fights. Uh, mm-hmm. I, and I think I was talking to Tunnel about this too. Uh, Bud and Spence that took a minute for that to happen. And when it mm-hmm. happened, it was it was a big fight. Man, I, I still don't think that shit sold out. So, mm-hmm. if Devin would have kept climbing the ladder mm-hmm. and he would have fought Tank years later it would have been probably one of the biggest fights of the generation speaking of generation tunnel so i me personally i wanted to see that now this kind of like this shifts I, yeah I don't, this division at, at yeah, this division I, don't, I think you said what i don't i wouldn't want to see haney boxing tank that shit would be such an easy win no no i'm saying if he won this and he could yeah, if he won this and he continued i still feel like tank can take his ass out easy i mean like, yeah. that's, that's that's a different level of pressure. You feel me? And and on top of that, how's it gonna sell tickets? I don't even think Tank would want to take no, that. Because I'm, I'm not talking about right now. I'm saying years I'm later. Saying like if, if, if yeah, Devin yeah, yeah. was if, De- if Devin would have beat Ryan, he would have beat. Right. Let's say he would have got uh Pitbull out the way. Let's say he would have beat To. All this is done now. All this is done. So, I'm just saying. So you saying you saying if he had won this fight and then two more after that, then he'd be ready for Tank. Is that what you're saying? Not no, not I'm not saying it would have been ready. I'm saying I would have loved to see that fight, the build up of that fight. I yeah. would love to see that moment in boxing. But right. again, all that shit is water on the bridge. That's done. That, it's done. This you saying that there's no redemption story for Haney? No, it is, I mean it's a redemption story for everybody, but I'm I'm telling you from the boxing fans, right? People right. are already questioning Haney's game. Like they not really yeah. want, he don't really sell, he's not really a drawer. People don't really care. I'm saying I was like. One of the few people that's like fighting for I'm just telling you the arguments that, that I have. Right. Like, I'm one of the few people fighting for him. Like, nah, I like Devin. Niggas is like, no, he's not good, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I would have liked him to come out on top and fight tank later on down the line. But I mean, all right. So let me ask you this question. What would you what does Haney need to do? Who does he need to fight next to get you and win? I mean, you know what I'm saying? For you to get back on board. I mean. I'm I'm talking about fully back on board, not I'm watching this with doubt and you know what I mean? Like who does he it's, really gotta it's hard to ask that question say because I was rooting like I was on his side when he beat Loma. The mm-hmm. a lot of the world didn't think he won that fight. So for me, I already was already like I'm already kind of on edge for you. I'm already jumping out the window for you, like you my homie or something. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm <laughs> like I don't know this nigga. I'm already jumping out the window for this nigga. So to see the fight with Loma happen, how it happened. And then you come back and you lose and this, how you lose it. Yeah. It's like you could get redemption, but do I have faith in it? No, because I had faith in you when a lot of niggas didn't have faith in you. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you probably could. I don't, yeah, he said a rematch when, yeah, okay, Ryan was three pounds over. It's boxing that could have a, a, a big impact. And mm-hmm. granted, some people would say it's not fair because it seemed like Ryan Garcia didn't plan to make weight in the, from the beginning. Mm-hmm. That's kind of like, it's skeptical, so I can understand that. So Ryan asking for the rematch for him to be at the weight. You know what I'm saying? He's three pounds over. That could be an advantage. It could be a disadvantage because if he won, people could have said Ryan was slower because he was heavier. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I think Ryan beat him in a convincing manner where I don't need to see a rematch because he dominated you, not on top of his game. 
So imagine if he was on top, like he dominated you after drinking a beer at the weigh-in. He dominated you at like just, bro, like you let an alcoholic beat you up, to be honest. Like you let, uh, Yo, like. This nigga dirty for that. Bro, you let. <laughs> you, you let a fat alcoholic nigga beat your ass on television. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and then you let him stick his tongue all out on your face, like shaking his legs and like teasing you like, man, yeah, bro, you went all bad. I, like, I mean, it is what it is. You, that's how I look at it. But I, can Haney come back from this? Yeah. I mean, he could. Mm -hmm. Do I believe? Like, do I have faith in it? Eh. You don't. You don't. And now, don't. if I would I would like to see a... Now it's on Ryan. I wouldn't mind seeing a Ryan Garcia tank rematch at uh, a regular weight, a catch weight, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. If Ryan then goes beat other people, like if he beats a Tio Fima Lopez, if he beats a pit bull if he goes and does the work that tank did already right if he if he go mm -hmm. watch these niggas then mm -hmm. i wouldn't mind seeing a rematch but right now man the way tank beat ryan and the way ryan just beat devin tank i don't want to hear devin mention tank name ever again i don't honestly after this i don't want to hear nobody mention tank tank is <laughs> on a level by himself sitting right. on the clouds making his money let him make his money because you mm -hmm. niggas ain't this ain't this ain't cutting not niggas this Niggas ain't really putting it down the way they're supposed to. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Now, what do you want to move to now? Um, uh, my bad. I didn't mean to go into that, man. I was just because yeah, I was I like that. that was a part of the rundown. So, like, and, and it's funny because when I brought it up, you seemed that it seemed like you was like didn't really have much to say about it. So I'm yeah. surprised you came in with it. That's what's up. I was nah. gonna go a whole superficial route, but so thank you for getting Yo, deep. Chad, are we in the chat, like who y'all think we who y'all think Devin should fight? I mean, or Ryan should fight next. I'm just curious before we go. My bad, That's, my bad. Go ahead, go ahead. That's a dope question. Yo, who y'all think Ryan should fight next? Me personally, I'm for I'm for the Devin Haney approach, like going for the belts. You know what I'm saying? Because clearly niggas got belts for a reason. I think Ryan should fight T.O. Or even Pitbull. Or I wouldn't mind saying, because I seen um I seen Shakur Stevenson calling him out on um Twitter. He was like, yo, he gave you your props uh, now on your side of the deal and take the fight. I don't mm -hmm. know if I care to see him fight Shakur Stevenson. Like Shakur Stevenson is good, bro. But but let, let's take the snooze fest stuff away. Let's take the fact that he's a boring fighter out of the way. I just don't think he put no numbers on the board yet. Mm. With all due respect, he's good. I just don't think Shakur fought anybody to get a big fight like 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 just yet. Shakur fight Devin now. Now Shakur fight Devin. You beat Devin. Then maybe like I just don't think he put numbers on the board yet. That's just my that's my 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 argument. Again again, I'm not saying that he's not good. I would like to see Ryan fight somebody with the belts. Like, I would like to see him fight T.O., maybe Pitbull. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I would like to see that. But I guess I wouldn't mind a Shakur. But I just don't think, man, I don't think these niggas be deserving this, bro. Like, I don't think, I don't think niggas be deserving this shit, man. But whatever. Like, it is what it is. A lot of niggas say, a lot of niggas saying Boots don't deserve a Bud fight. And I don't agree with that. So that could be looked at as a similar situation but i don't know I'm, we can move on my bad go ahead let's go let's go let's go no you cool that's cool uh we're gonna go into a little shine situation go to the one uh to the left <laughs> to the left to the left to the oh, left shine? oh shine yeah all right baby it opens wounds um when you hear um you know the victim saying that it was did it that shot her. That is what is the most remarkable. Oh, you didn't see that? I saw it. Okay. And that was triggered by a lawsuit from a producer that produced on the Love album who is making accusations. And in those accusations, he says that the gentleman confessed to the shooting. And that is what stands out to me the most because you know I've done my best to put it behind me and to move forward uh, and so um, but it certainly reopens the wounds that I've been saying this all along everyone knew all along that I was the fall guy um, but my political enemies and you know he said political enemies all right and then the next one whenever you're ready Cause it's not that long. I don't even know why they spliced this thing up in the two. Is she, is she accurate, sir? I'm not going to get into that, but 
it does open wounds and um, certainly I am relieved that uh, people are saying what the truth is that you know I did not uh, shoot um, those people I maintain that I never shoot nobody um, that there were other guns there I always said that that has not changed and that is the testimony that came out um, fragments were never removed uh, so there was never any forensic testing to say who it was uh, but the victims are vindicating me uh, witnesses are vindicating me but I have I have moved on I, I'm not trying to relive that uh, and, and so I am appreciative of whatever contributions uh, Diddy has made um, to help the people of Belize all right so this clip came out diddy has not been officially charged for anything yet let's get that established there is a bunch of rumors going around that they are establishing a case for uh they're establishing a case for sex trafficking and that's number one now there should not be any relitigation of a case that already happened and there was a judgment for why am i bringing this up is because my question comes down to why did shine need to reply to this at all this did not need to be replied to yo the persons came out they said what they said all right bro move on you already the president of belize you already won the you already won your uh trial you know you, i mean excuse me you already run your you already won your campaign nobody is questioning your validity at this point um can I ask Go ahead. you? Go ahead. But if you are, well, you say you already won the trial or you already won the he, campaign. He run, he run the campaign. He's but the let's president. Let's talk about innocence, though. Because okay. Because if you were, if your character was challenged and you really did not do anything, the moment right. you see any, the moment you see some space to clear your name, I can understand why somebody would want to take that. Okay. Okay, I respect that. However, by you coming out and making a statement and you doing this this little Millie Rock dance all around this thing to try to not implicate Diddy at the same time while you trying to clear your name, I think that was just really crazy. I don't uh, think that he's he's trying to not implicate nobody, but it's it's our where we come from. You know what I'm saying? Like when somebody he's like, yo, basically, did Diddy do it? Bro, I ain't answering that, bro. Like that's just the culture we come from. It's we ain't about to talk about Tory Lanez, but I feel like that be the downfall of our environment, to be honest, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. even if you're innocent, you should be able to say, well, okay, if you're innocent, who did it? Mm -hmm. Not saying this is, not saying I agree with this or not saying that I don't agree with it or not saying that it's okay. But where we come from, we can't really answer that question. It's like, I ain't do it. Who did it? I don't know. Ain't none of my business. Bet. So we see we it, it, all the evidence points to you. So now you go to jail for for, for a lifetime. This is this is why this is a, diff, a different conversation. But this is why it's so important that we don't have our kids grow up in the street. So we 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 be there to teach our kids because of things like this. When you are living by street code, you got to abide by street code. Mm -hmm. Granted, he's not living it by it no more, but he's lived it. So once you lived it, it's fair to say that. You probably gotta live it for the rest of your life, right? Mm -hmm. Not saying I agree with it. Yeah. I'm just saying I understand him saying, "Bro, that ain't none of my business." Word. Now, um, you know, Raw Dope makes a it makes a statement saying he lost everything and got fucked over, and Diddy is still on some wild shit. Interesting statement. When uh, Sean got out of jail, deported back to Belize, guess who went and took the first flight over to meet him? Diddy. I mean, that's, that's the least you does. can do, though. But what did he does? Put multiple millions of dollars in his pocket and gives him a brand new Maybach. Mm -hmm. Interesting. When he decides to run for president of Belize, guess who comes over to support the campaign and starts putting money into the campaign? Did he put money into the campaign? So for as much as we, once again, not saying that the man does not have a right to speak his mind and to make a statement, but to to have somebody who has been a heavy supporter of you post you coming out of jail for whatever reason, whether it be old or friendship, you know what I'm saying? 
for you to then say now that you've gotten in a position that you want to be like, yo, bro, you know what I'm saying? I ain't, I told you I ain't shoot that motherfucker. And you know what I'm saying? And I don't know who did, but you know, uh, and then at the end to go, well, you know what they said is true. What they said is that Diddy shot him and you didn't. So you just implicated somebody that funded your campaign. Wait, did he say that? He said what they said is true. I thought he said yeah. they, the, that the was the statement. That was, that was the last clip. He said what they said and the, what they said is true. That's he said that out of his own mouth. That's no, crazy. No, I think he was talking about the people that said Sean didn't hit him, shoot him. Right. That's what I thought. Like Sean didn't shoot him, shoot me. That's right. what the right. he said. Right. I mean, that's what the guy said. Like Sean. So I think he. I think again. I think he. It was just a him trying to weasel, like connect the two, like. No, I don't want to snitch on Diddy, mm -hmm. but yes, I want to let y'all know that y'all shouldn't judge my character. I didn't do this. Mm -hmm. This is not mm -hmm. who y'all think I am. Mm -hmm. I can see how the two can, like he's trying to correlate the two. You get what I'm saying? Right. And as right. far as that, I didn't even know that Diddy did all of that. Yeah. But again, that shows more, not saying it's a, a, a mission of guilt, but I mean, he did all of that. Let's, let, let, let's have a little retrospective on Diddy real quick. And if you want to make this a clip, I'm with you, my brother. I've been a Diddy fan since Diddy started doing backup dancing from Mary J. Blige and other people back in the day. When Diddy came into power, Diddy has has had a reputation reputation behind the scenes and publicly for being a over the top character to be very loving, but also to be very aggressive. There have been times when uh, one of his children was in college and the football coach, he hits the guy with a dumbbell. They, they clear that up. Uh, multiple fights. He got into a physical altercation with Drake. He got into a physical altercation with J. Cole. He got into a physical altercation with Jay at one point in time. Jay-Z. He's got into physical... Like, there's a list of people that he's gotten into physical altercations with. There have been multiple uh, scenarios where he has gone into people's offices and trashed the office, uh, having spaz out moments, being overly aggressive in a lot of situations. And of course, now we have this plethora of women coming out talking about different, you know, physical abuses of different types. So um, I, I tell people all of the time, you got to take the good with the bad when you're dealing with high powered people not high power people because they pussy and they just come out and they just aggressive no it takes a lot of aggression it takes a lot of tenacity and drive to become successful mm. that's a part of the game now what I, I heard somebody online said the problem with diddy is the fact that there was nobody there to check him that as his as he grew so as he got into positions of power there was nobody to keep him grounded. Now, there were mentors around him that did what they could do, but there's only certain there's only a certain amount you could do. You know what I mean to a guy, especially if he's physically aggressive. So, unless he got like an OG that's like on his level aggressive and then going like, "All right, you want to get the fight and he's going to pop you upside the head and you going to calm the fuck down." Mm -hmm. He's going to be a wild nigga. You know what I'm saying? Now, there's a statement being made in the group chat. Uh Raw Dope said, "He took the hit for a boss like a real one supposed to. He's talking about shine." The boss just a sucker, meaning Diddy. I feel like Sean more, uh, lost more. Diddy lost nothing. Um, I agree with that. Uh, Sean lost 20 years of his life in prison. Uh, and Diddy lost nothing. Mm, a huge blemish on his record, but no, technically nothing. But let me ask you this question. If we were to switch the situation, Sean goes, stays out, and then Diddy goes to jail. Mm, there's a huge difference in the world. The music industry is completely different if Diddy's not in the space that he's in. There are a lot of things that we we are enjoying as luxuries now would not probably pretty much be in a space because Diddy has contributed a lot of money. Like, you got to remember, De Leon, Ciroc, sponsor how many parties, nigga? Jay, come on, bro. Ciroc was dumping money into the club scene. We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars for a decade. So what people don't ever think about is like the effect of a person over a time period to remove Diddy from a situation just because he's a dickhead and he's a dumbass and he's a fuck fuck up does not mean that it's better. <laughs> you know yeah, what I'm saying? Boy, wait, boy. wait, wait, hold up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. I'm ready for it today, brother. Let's do it. Let's have this complicated conversation. I think that's, that's such a... It's I such a... Know. 
I don't know. I'm trying to look for a, a better way to say this, but the first thing that comes to mind is like that's such an ignorant statement to make to say to take him away because he's a dickhead. These we ain't talking about just being mean, not speaking to people, not taking pictures when they want pictures, not signing autographs. We're talking about shooting somebody. Not we're not saying you said to take him away because he's a dickhead. We're talking about uh, we're talking about we're talking about no what we're talking about allegedly sex trafficking. We're talking like we're not talking about mis miscommunication right. on contracts. L so let's 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 talk nuance. So he was in a club. There was a club shooting. He's kind of protecting himself. A, a bullet, a stray hit somebody. They didn't die. Shit has happened a thousand times. Nigga put a gun in his pocket. Shot was, you said it. You said it, it was self defense. Hey, that was the argument. Okay. So, like, you know what I mean? Uh, so you've got that component. It's not like his intent was to go to the club and be like, "Yo, nigga, you owe me money." Pow, pow. It's yo, some shit is happening. Nigga, I'm understand that. myself. Boom. All right. So that's nuance. Second thing, sex trafficking. I've said this in the last pod. Yo, anytime that there is an exchange, a monetary exchange for sex, meaning that you give money, you giving cars, you giving, you know, purses, that's that's prostitution. And then to take this transaction, and now I'm taking the girl to Tahiti, and da, 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 this girl that I'm spending money on to fuck. And now I'm taking her to other places and we doing threesomes and all this other shit. That's sex trafficking. So now what are we doing? So we're going to throw this nigga away. Okay. For no, some no, shit? No, I, I'm, I'm not really trying to, cause I don't want to put that on his name. Cause that's not like proven. So what I'm well, I'm talking about allegations. these are what yeah. the allegations are. Right. Now the abuse stuff, totally inappropriate, totally bad. Not, I'm not condoning none of this. You know what I mean? When it comes down to this, anytime we talk about you physically beating on women, that's why I got my, I have a serious, serious, serious issue with that. The sex trafficking shit, I really be on some like, come on, bro. Is this, this what we really doing? Uh, when you talk about that little situation in the club, I'm like, eh, um, you know what I'm saying? Or even down to you, yeah, him catching a fair one with, with niggas in some real life shit. Unless it's a dude that wasn't trying to come at you with that energy and you just flipped out. And went and you know what I'm saying like I, I think the coach situation, I don't know. It was a white coach. They were saying he was being a little racist. Yo, if it's my son, I'm going upside a nigga head. That's just how it is. Um, and like Roger said, that's, that's a fact. That's why Sean took the hit. And by Diddy staying in the position that he stayed in, when Sean comes out of jail, Diddy can do something for him. Hey, I can put some money in your pocket. Hey, man, I can I can put your lifestyle back to where at least it was when you left. I feel like as much as we want to try to, I feel like, yo, I know that we want to cancel Diddy, bro. I know niggas is mad because some shit happened online. You see some shit happening. You see all these news reports coming out. But if Diddy is that much of an asshole, then why the fuck would he give a shit about Sean getting out of jail? Wow. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, but but that, 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 that that's, I don't think that says asshole. Again, this is just all speculation. This speculation. is all speculation. I don't right. think that that makes somebody an asshole or not. I think that, if anything, it shows guilty. It shows that you got a conscience. It shows that, bro, I really did this. My man got locked up for however long, because I don't remember this, right? But my man right. got locked up for however long, and not even just guilty conscience. It could just be being like, bro, like, I appreciate you. Thank you for holding it down. Right, it could it could just yeah. simply be that. I don't think yeah. him doing that says, "Oh, he's not a f the person or is a f the person." I just think like, I mean, I'm saying that I know dudes that did grimy stuff to people, and people took the fall for it. And then when they got out of jail, they ain't do nothing for that man. You know what I'm saying? There's no, it's not like there's a law stating that he that did he had to go yeah, and do that. For him. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? He could, could he could move on with his life and ignore the dude and never talk to him ever again. And like for Diddy to do that, and as much as Diddy has done in our community for our community, they didn't have to do, bro. Like the only thing I'm saying is let's we need to find a better way to prosecute our own. Now, you're right? I just <laughs> don't. I don't like the argument. Yeah. I don't like Look the up. argument because I feel like sometimes I'll be put in these positions where somebody will do something wrong to you. But just because mm -hmm. they show the world that they this good person that invalidates your experience with them. And I don't think that's right because a lot of people, they be like, what is it? They throw stones and hide their hand or some shit like that. I forgot the exact. Like, so what happened is like a nigga will treat you like some shit. 
Mm-hmm. But because he's this good person in public, my say so doesn't matter. And like I, I think that's a, is a slippery slope because sometimes we see women abuse this. Mm-hmm. That's just being real. But I'm saying that's why I say I, mm-hmm. I, I, I kind of, I, I kind of understand how people can feel away about it. That's why I said mm-hmm. me, I just rather wait to see what's true and what's not true because right. I, I've been in those situations where I'm telling niggas like, man, this is a grimy person. But to right. the world, they're like, oh man, how you got a problem with such and such? Right. Like, what? Right. So that's why I'm saying, like, and what is it like what what we say, okay, because he did because he did so many good things for the community and the culture, and he brought so many stars along the line, that means that we should dismiss his foul behavior. I mean, I don't I don't necessarily yo, this is a great conversation, and I am going to play the bad guy today. I'm going to play the bad guy. So y'all can crucify me in the comments, clip this up and make me look like the devil if you want to. We have to deal with the reality that the world that we living in. If a if, if I have a character, a person, I'm gonna take this off of Diddy. If I have man X that acquires millions of dollars and employs hundreds of thousands of people, but he decides he wants to kill rhinos, yo, I'm gonna stop him from killing rhinos. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm gonna I'm 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 slap your hand and you know what I mean be mad at you because the rhinos is extinct now. But nigga, I'm not about to throw you away as a person because, yo, you help literally hundreds of thousands of people that help hundreds of, th- you know what I'm saying? It's like, bro, we got, nobody's perfect. And once again, when you talk about individual, when I, I've said this a million times, if you dig in somebody's, anybody's closet, it's, you're going to find skeletons, number one. When you talk about people that live a high velocity lifestyle, meaning that they're very aggressive, they're, they're going to do whatever they got to do to get to the top. Guess who's going to have more skeletons? The nigga that keep the day job at the McDonald's or the nigga that's out here fighting and crawling to find his success and to make the lives of himself and others better. That motherfucker is going to make big, big. He's going to have big issues. And there are going to be times where he might be put in compromising situations. So like, yo, so at that point, like that means everybody has something in their closet that has something for them to be thrown away over. Yo, everybody, I don't care if you uh, a Barack Obama. Yo, Martin Luther King was cheating on his wife. Oh, oh, fuck Martin Luther King. It's like, what the fuck, nigga? We all got shit that we do fucked up. And and you can't, we can't just throw everybody away just because they're not fucking perfect. No, you can't throw everybody away. And let me be really honest with you. It's my opinion personally. I'm not about to be like, fuck Diddy forever because he made some mistakes in his 20s and his early 30s. You give a nigga $40 million, you make him one of the most powerful people in the music industry. And yes, women are going to come around him. He's going to get annoyed at certain times and shit is going to happen, bro. You coked up, hired up. You want to get into physical altercations. Shit's going to happen, bro. Does that mean now that nigga needs to be thrown underneath of the jail? No, my nigga, people that make progress, make progress. This is the real world we talking about. I'm not talking about fantasy Christian land. I'm talking about the real world. Do I want somebody less, uh, less effective to come in and take his place? No. Do I want some person that's not about our culture to come and take Diddy's place? No. Who do we have that's going to take Diddy's place? Who, yo, and as much as every nigga in this chat room want to be mad at me right now, tell me somebody from your generation right now that has been as impactful as Diddy has been. No, I'm Name with you. I, I, I already had this conversation. Like, I'm with you. All I'm saying, I think this is this is this is a, a sticky conversation to have because once hey, you open Christ. that door, how do we close it? For example, bro, uh. R. Kelly had his hands on a thousand artists. No point intended. I mean, he wrote for many greats. He's made yeah. many greats. So yeah. because we, we 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 love him as an artist means we put aside his nasty behavior. So like, I get what you're saying. I understand it fully. Okay. But where do we draw the line? Because if you- this is this is where I feel like this is how we draw the line. You cut the nigga balls off, literally. You cut his dick and his balls off, and then you lock him somewhere, and all he do is make music. Everybody wins. Look at you. Look, you're not even mad at it. You look at you thinking about no, it. You no, thinking no, about no, it. No, it's it's not, not that, bro. I'm I'm just thinking, it's easy. That's why I try not to have these hypothetical conversations because <laughs> that is easier said than done when you're not the person. That's been done wrong, bro. Like that's why I say I've been done wrong. Like when you're not the person that's been done wrong, what? So we're saying that what happened to you doesn't matter because 
That's not true. This nigga ain't got no dick and balls no more. And he gonna get gang raped once a week, like just for you. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's gonna, he's catching it bad for the rest of his life just for you to say, and we're gonna make him say sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, he'll come make a song just for you. Number one on the charts. Yo, here's your apology. Here's your, here's your vengeance. Here's the justice. And then the rest of the world still gets the benefit of the gifts. I mean, I get, I don't, I, yeah, I mean, I don't think the world would like that, but I, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. Like, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I, again, I'm one that, um, I'm gonna be real. I can separate the person from the art. Yeah. Like, because the things I like don't have nothing to do with how I look at you. Right. Like, period. Right. So I, I get it. But I just think that's a tricky conversation because I, we got to look at the, the people who are the victims of these issues. And to, mm -hmm. I don't want to just misuse the platform or misuse my voice when I'm like, yeah, man, let's let them do whatever they want. It's like, ah. Not going to say let them do whatever they want. I just feel like we're, we're extreme. I, my position is I don't want to be an extremist, but I do want to be a realist of, yo, okay, let's do the investigation. If Diddy did what he did, Yo, he needs to he needs to suffer the consequences of his actions. But us as a community, we should not then go, yo, I hate you forever. And now you can never show your face in public ever again. And yo, let's demolish bad boy records. Let's demolish everything he's ever built. And now we got to be embarrassed about everything he's done for the last 30 years. What? No, my nigga. No, because. What we do is, is like we find some that somebody did wrong. And now we say this wrong thing now contaminates everything this person ever has done. And I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, I think you know that's not mean? fair. I don't think that's fair. But I mean, that's just life. And But what happened is it those moments pass. Those moments mm -hmm. pass. Think about it. Like when uh, Lil, Lil Mama, since my last interview, she went on stage. Twitter killed her. Mm -hmm. Right. But after five, six years, we weren't thinking about it no more until we had the conversation, of course. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, but like this is just we're in the moment. So this is was this is what's going to come from it. Which all of your secrets are being exposed, all of your skeletons that's in your closet is being exposed. That's what anybody, like you said, everybody got skeletons. When it's being exposed, you gotta deal with what happens in that moment. And you mm -hmm. and hopefully you can get some therapy, you can get some some help where you can be strong in that moment so you can weather the storm. But that's just mm -hmm. that's just how it is. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. that's just mm -hmm. how it is. No, I feel you. I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I ain't tripping, tripping. All right, but let me, let me do this. I want to throw this one clip in, um, because I think this kind of goes into the conversation we're having. But this is on actually on a local level. Uh, yo, uh, a homie of mine is a young lady that I met last year. Uh, you know, she's a dope musician. Her name is Love K. Uh, there is a situation going on. If if you are listening and you're not from Baltimore, or if you're in Baltimore, you're not a part of the scene. Or well, every scene, and this is not just a Baltimore thing. Every city has bad actors, people that do bad things in a city. In Baltimore, in the music scene, there have been multiple individuals identified as, you know what I'm saying, rapists, uh, because they have done acts against other individuals. In Baltimore, because our scene is so small, we have a tendency to forget that individuals might have been involved in stuff and then things happen. So Love K really went online because there was a show that went on Friday. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, she can explain it better, but please play the clip. So I'm coming to y'all today, unfortunately, about something that raises a lot of concern for me and a lot of people here in the art district or the art community, the musician community, whatever you want to call it here in Baltimore, Maryland, okay? A lot of people have concerns. A lot of people have complaints. A lot of people don't feel safe in certain environments. And I'm here to enlighten y'all on why that is. Which leads me to my concern here. Those who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Anybody that say I'm lying or whatever, suck my dick. Because you know what I'm talking about. And you still allowing these people to be put on platforms. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. So y'all see this flyer right here? Boom. The person who curated this show, name is Kay, Be More Alien. There was an issue 
only two years ago. And if y'all need receipts, it's fine. I'll have them attached. There was an issue two years ago where there was a man named Lowe's Carlos, whatever the fuck his name was. He has several sexual assault victims in this city and across the u.s right this is something i had knowledge of since 2015 i was in high school i never knew the man name but it was always talked about soon as i got into the music scene then i was warned about him i was warned about stay away from this man he raped this woman he raped that woman we know he be raping and i'm like oh shit that's crazy so i'm like who is this nigga boom 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 this who he is who tells me this? The person hosting this show. Miss Cam. Niggas, no, I'm not lying. What year was this? This was 2019. So I'm going to pause this. I don't want to go too far down this rabbit hole because I don't, I, I, I feel like a lot of this is emotional. Uh, a lot, a lot of this is her expressing her personal feelings about it, and I respect. I yo, I definitely respect her for coming out and saying and having a conversation and opening up a dialogue. I wanted, uh, I purely wanted to play this clip because I wanted to have a conversation because I have things that I don't understand. So, number one, there are individuals that committed acts, you know, inappropriate acts out in public. Now. I don't know. She said that one of the guy that she's referring to that she heard about has seven charges, seven open cases. That's crazy. Mm. Number one. Number two, you know, this person was connected in the city and then there were people that knew about these acts and still wanted to do business with that person. That's crazy. Um, now, I've always been a proponent of Yo, if a person, if the if, if she had told, if she had posted this video and said the guy went through his trial, hey, he went to he went to jail, he served his time, and he went to therapy, he came out and did a public apology, I probably wouldn't be on K side. But from what she said and from what I've heard personally in the streets from other people that are a part of the music scene, is that there are multiple individuals still out here doing inappropriate acts meaning that some people have been accused of rape been on twitter with it and then find out you know later on they still doing it oh they raped this other person there's a very deep twitter thread with over a thousand entries of women telling stories about certain individual men committing acts and them they're just going back and forth with each other like yo that nigga did me like this yo this nigga did me like that i'm like but then when I get into the thread and I'm like, would anybody be willing to come forward? Can we go to the police? Would you be willing to go to the police? Would you be willing to come on a platform and have a conversation? No, nope, that's when I get crickets. I don't understand when this young lady makes her statement. I understand her position. But then she's saying, yo, y'all still support these people. Duh, 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 duh. But I'm still trying to understand when are the women going to support each other and stand up and like if the dude is in jail, he can't come to an event. <laughs> like, so like if and I'm and once again, I'm not trying to blame women. I'm not trying to say, you know, that women can't, they have the choice to do what they want to do. But my frustration here is either give me the name and you let me deal with it. Or you give the police the name and let the police deal with it. And let's go through the entire process. If you're going to give the name to the police, you got to show up in court. You got to put your name on the paperwork. This is where I want to see solutions to the problem. I want our scene to be safe. I want young women because I have a goddaughter. I've got nieces. I have young ladies that are coming up. They love what I do. Some of them want to be media. Some of them want to be musicians. I want them to feel safe. I want them to be safe. I don't want them. To, I don't give a fuck how they feel. I want them to be safe wherever they go, whether in this music scene or around this city. Yo, why? I am not just trying to say, yo, guys, we got to step up. But I am saying that. Guys, y'all need to step up, bro. You need to be pulling coattails of niggas. If you see niggas acting inappropriately, yo, even down to the point where we get a little loose with, I understand hood shit is hood shit. So you're going to call niggas bitches and y'all going to get back and forth. But we need to be more cognizant about our actions, making sure that we not being abusive, making sure that we definitely not supporting no rape shit, bro. 
Like I seen niggas, I be telling I when I find out a niggas on some bullshit like that, I tell niggas they couldn't come to my radio station no more, bro. You banned. Mm-hmm. And it's crazy that I had a I had a ban list. I had four to five dudes where I was like, they can't come in my building. And and then like people would end up DMing me, oh yo, what's the problem? Nigga, I this is what I heard. This is what happened. So like so my you, question is if it's this, I'm I'm confused because Go ahead. I'm with you. Go ahead. Like, I don't understand how, like, if somebody comes to, so- if you could come to social media, you can go to the police. Like, I that that's how I look at it. Yeah. And all right. So, like, all right. Raw Dope just had a comment. He said, it's deep. We can't touch that topic. Why can't I touch this topic? <laughs> this is the result of lack of faith in the legal system. All right. So, go and this, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go like, I, I don't understand. Like, if, like, if you can go to social media and put a nigga on blast, you can go to the police. So, like, again, I'm not because I don't know the young lady, but I, and I don't know if I mean clearly people went to the police because he got cases, right? I'm assuming. Yeah. Right? So I'm, right. I'm just trying to. That's that's one guy out of maybe seven or eight. So maybe I don't understand. I'm trying to understand because you said there's a whole Twitter thread with thousands of messages. So, but that's uh, multiple uh, people that we talking multiple about. Multiple yeah. women who have been affected by different guys within the scene. So, if, does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like. A, a Twitter thread, and once she starts the thread where she's telling a story about how she was raped by a guy in a venue in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. So then there's another girl that comes in and says, Yo, I was also raped by this particular person. Then there's another girl that's like, I was raped by this person. Then there might have been a fourth or fifth girl that said, Well, I wasn't touched by this guy, but this guy from the same scene, he did it. And then there's another girl, Yo, that nigga did the same thing. And it's like, Yo, it'll make you sick to your stomach. I saw because I had a friend of mine that sent me that thread, and I'm sitting there reading. And when I'm telling you, some of these women I know and they're yeah, friends, and, seen, and um, I'm angry. Akila Devine, shout out to her. She said it was a big thing that happened. She said it shook the music industry up. She didn't even want to come outside for a period of time. So, like, I want Akila to understand something as a man, as a 45 year old man, and any lady that's watching this right now. I am willing to stand with you if you decide to go and move forward to make whatever happen. You know what I'm saying? If you want to go to the police station, let's do it. Like, if you want to, I don't want to keep arguing and fussing online about hearsay. Number one, Mm -hmm. I want to put shit to rest. Let's deal with the issue. I think I think what happens is people so self-absorbed. That like it sounds like this is some type of, of a music scene in Baltimore where people benefit from. So I'm not right. saying it's okay, but people be so self-absorbed that they rather even we see it now a nigga rather pick up the phone and record somebody getting jumped and damn near killed so they can get some likes on Instagram than to help the person out. Right. Same with this situation. It's like yeah, that happened to them. I'm still benefiting off this situation, so I'm not gonna cut this person off because if I just like you said, what did we talking about Diddy? It's right. like he's helped so many people. So if I cut them off, then that's taking resources from me. I don't agree with it, but that's what happens in the world. But until we stick together, right? Like if all these ladies stuck together and they really came together, I don't, I, don't, I it's hard because I'm trying to, I never, I didn't, I don't know. I'm talking about it blindly. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know. I never, I ain't hear about this situation. My issue comes down to, and I want to, I, I don't want to talk to her on this platform, but I want to have a conversation with the young lady, you know what I'm saying, about, she was her, she was upset not because the rapist was in the venue at the event that just happened. She's so saying we, somebody, to somebody that was affiliated. So it was a manager that was managing the artist. This artist was the headliner of an event. So she's like, you shouldn't even let this artist headline. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right. So now my question then comes down to, all right, is the artist still being managed by that person or did the guy let him go? All right. If the dude let him go and they not affiliated no more, how much time are you going to spend demonizing this one artist? You know what I'm saying? Like that's to me, that's where we started getting in the murky water is because she was very adamant about canceling all of these people. Well, these all people was hanging out and like, they knew the shit that went down and I'm just like, okay. I'm like, so nah, but that again, I'm that, like, nah, I get that though, bro. If somebody right, gets you dirty right. and people right. know about it and they do nothing about it. Bro, it's F them too. It's like, bro, you mean it's if if you Mm-mm. bro, if you're in the room and somebody mm-hmm. does something outlandish to a, a woman, right? 
and right. you and you are there, you do nothing. Oh, you mm-hmm. you need to be held accountable too. Like agree, like yes, agree. But what if you're my manager? You go and do something. I wasn't there. I don't. I, I don't. I don't have firsthand knowledge of any of this. Okay. And then when I find out, I'm being ambushed on a situation. Like yo, your man's out here doing some dirt. If I've known this dude five, ten years, I'm gonna be like, yo, the, for my first inclination is not gonna be, yo, bro, I can't never fuck with you no more. Like, oh, nigga, you, you, this person. It's like I'm a, you know, you want to stand next to your friend. That's why I said we getting in the murky waters because it's like, how do we, how do you navigate things? And I feel like going to ten out the gate. I mean, can somebody get her on the chat then? Because I don't want to. I'm shit. I, shit. What's her name? Uh, <laughs> Her name is KLA. Uh, they love K. Shout out to K. They love K. I actually hold I'm on. Trying, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to follow, but it's hard to follow because I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like, so hold, on, like hold on, hold on. Let me. Uh, all right. I don't. Yo, can you jump on the stream? Uh, hold up. Um, all right. So well, I don't hold on. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. You keep talking and let me read this first. <laughs> she saying, just, even, if we, even if we can't get on the screen, we can just you can call and just put it like so we can hear. Because I'm just trying to like I'm trying to understand what's the axe here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is it cut everybody off that got that got some type of ties to them? Because clearly the person is popular, right? So they got ties to everybody. So if even if I know them, am I am I guilty by association because I know the nigga? Is that what you're saying, Jay? Right, 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 right. Um, you know what I mean. <sighs> I don't, I'm know, I don't know the story. Now. That's what I'm trying to. Right, I, I don't so know I'm, the trying story to, I'm trying to differentiate. So first of all, I need to differentiate what the issues are, yeah. so that I can focus. So we can focus on solutions. I don't want to. I don't want to unilaterally just cancel everybody just because there is. You know what I mean? This one person makes a problem. Now, if there are two or three people in the room, they actually are all a part of the problem. Yeah. So. So to clarify your statement that you made earlier to me, if if I if a rape happens and I'm in the room and I don't do nothing about it, guess what? I'm a part of the rape, nigga. Like yeah. mm-hmm. I'm I'm co-raper. You know what I'm saying? But if I'm not in the room, I had nothing to do with it. But we're friends or we're associated, and that's even less if I'm associated through business. If we just have a business association and something happens, then my number one thing is to disassociate myself. Let me do my investigation, figure out what's going on, and disconnect myself from that person and say, yo, this is inappropriate. And you know what I mean, condemn that person appropriately. You know what I mean? Outside of that, uh, to go, all right, fuck everybody in the whole situation. I feel like that's complicated. You know what I'm saying? Because now we're not learning, we just gang banging. <laughs> we just start instantaneously beefing. All right. So uh let me go to the chat real quick. Stan's house. She says Jaguar. Okay, Jaguar, right? I think that's what you're talking about. Andre says slippery slopes. What are the rules for snitching when it comes to different types of yo? Can we stop, bro? We're not talking about drug dealing. We're not talking about gang banging. We're talking about a nigga, a dude, excuse me, a man raping a woman. This is not street code. In the case this of, is, but, but I, 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 not understand, a prior, bro. I understand the skepticism though, because in the, in the case of this is true. It should be a dub period. Yes. It's a dub, right. And we've but, seen so many times where yeah. it does be a slippery slope. Like, I'm not saying because I again I don't know this situation. In the case is true, we should dub that person absolutely 100 percent Right. But in the case that we don't know, you think we should just cancel people because people say things. And that's but I mean, where there's a thousand that's, people then like that's why I said I guess where, you said it wasn't a thousand people saying one person, like right, the name exactly. so I'm, I'm trying to understand what's going on. And, and this is what made it complicated. I, and, and I, I all right, so. I don't want to, I don't want, the reason why I brought this up is because number one, I want women to know that not only we're paying attention, but we're willing to take a stand. Okay. Yeah, hey, yeah, I'm paying sure. attention to what's going on. Yeah. Hey, I follow K. I saw this, this, yo, when she sheds a tear, that shit got me choked up. I'm, and I'm getting pissed. So I'm sad for a friend of mine. I'm sad. And then I'm personalizing it because I have women in my life that move around the city every mm. day young women you know what i'm saying and i can't be there to to protect them at all times so as a man that have women that i love around me you know what i'm saying yo i need to address this but i'm not here to come in and start gang banging yo fuck everybody and these niggas no hey ladies what's going on you know who are these people 
How are we going to deal with these people? If there is an issue, if somebody is doing something inappropriate, we have to bring charges. And the reason why I'm saying this is important because, and I'm not trying to single out Andre, but he made a statement that is causing, that is uh, 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 going along with the problem. Yo, this, yo, the rules on snitching. There is no rule. This is not about snitching. This is about somebody committed a crime against another person and that needs to be dealt with. And we need to figure out, is it true or not true? We need to have the police involved so that we can have the court system take us through a process of figuring out who's right or wrong. And while that process is going on, we need to remove that person from our space to maintain the safety of the women in our spaces that are public. I hope I'm not being confusing and I hope I'm not being too loud. But does that make sense? Mm hmm. Is it rape <clears throat> or it's you didn't get what you wanted after you gave it up? I'm against rape or anything dealing with that. But women be playing and they can use that against a man. Bruh, that's true. But that's what I was speaking to. Yep. That's yep. what I'm. But it's just again, because I, I can't. I don't want to misspeak because I don't know the situation. You feel me? Right. Like I, you like right. I got half of a story. Like I heard half of her. I didn't even get half of her story. You didn't get another half, right? Correct. So what needs to happen now is we need to deal with this. Like once again, like and this is where I don't like is like everybody. Yo, the conversation gets to this point, and then everybody goes, "All right, yo, everybody to their corners now," because you know sometimes niggas is dirty and sometimes bitches are dirty. So now it's a dead conversation. Yo, what needs to happen is. It's time for the court case. And if it's a guy being accused of something and you know, you know that it's you, you not. I mean, if you somebody's accusing you and you know it's untrue, yo, you need to be stepping on you, standing on your square. And and I, shit. Yes. And I and I'm 100 percent with that. I and, think yeah, what happened is people would, so to, scared, people would be so scared to, to uh, put themselves out there. They read the I'm, a, I'm with that 100 percent. People be so scared to put themselves out there because they think it's going to bring too much right. attention to it. It's like, nah, bro. Like, nah, I don't agree with that. Like. Yo, he got a right. He has the man has rights too. And once again, it goes back to what I'm saying to stop with this snitching shit. If a girl gonna come out at me and say some wild shit and take it to social media, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the police and I'm gonna file charges, bro. This is defamation. Yes, this is not true. I am not that nigga. I yeah. have never done that. And look, let's have a court case and see. Let's get that, get this shit cleared up. Let's deal with it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Let's do that. So that once again, I need my family. I need my wife. I need my kids. I need whoever I'm dealing with to feel safe in these streets. So that means we got to start conducting ourselves more above board. Yo, I, once again, I'm not get talking about street shit. I'm not talking about drug dealing. I ain't talking about, you know, organized crime. That's over here. But us civilian people that are musicians or that are just everyday people living our lives, you yo, you have to. We have to start not operating by some organized crime rule for our everyday lives. Yo, yo, so something happened, so everybody just keeps sweeping it under the rug. But guess what happened? Now we we sitting on a powder keg of so much shit that's been swept under the rug. We don't even know how to even handle shit like regular people. Mm -hmm. But when we start getting this trash up from underneath of our rugs and we start separating what's real and what's fake then we can come guess what's going to happen women are going to at least feel like black men the black women in our communities that are frustrated are at least going to be like yo this is ugly but at least i feel like my black men are doing what they have to do to make us feel safe again we have to take responsibilities too bro and we can't always default to well now you know how these bitches be yeah, bro, that's true, that's sometimes, true, yeah. you, sometimes you gotta yo to clean up a house you gotta get dirty baby we all got to get dirty in this motherfucker and start cleaning shit up. And that means that we start have to start approaching things different. We have to start thinking differently. We have to start taking responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you even sleeping with a girl that has mental issues like that to where that's going to be something she's going to default to. You can see that shit early. We all know we love and I'm, I ain't going to try to make it funny, but we all know we like certain things sometimes but you know there are toxic consequences that come along with it so that at some point now as men hey as a 45 year old man let me tell my younger brother something all vagina ain't good vagina every situation ain't just a situation sometimes you need to just be like when shorty start acting a little crazy or she's saying crazy stuff and you first met her and she'll talk yeah i stab a nigga 
Oh, you know, I da, da, da. guess what you need to do. Hey, my queen, it was nice meeting you. So Yo, I, think, I hope I you get help you and start moving off. Go ahead. I think Kate just uh hit the uh the Instagram. She's trying to go live on Instagram, but um I'm about nah, to send her my email. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm about to tell her send me her email. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm a, I'm a, I, hey K, I'm about to email you. I got her email address. I'm about to email you the link right now, fam. So, like, you know what I'm saying? To get her on. All right. <clears throat> So yeah, all, all, all in all, let's and I just want to be very clear about this, bro. I want, I don't want this to be about I don't want this to be about anything more than us showing each other support. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I want this to be all about us. Uh hold on, show it because I'm saying this to her. I want this to be also about starting a new day where us as black men are stepping up and we having different uh we're having difficult conversations. And like, and this is something I respect K for when she texted me back. She was like, Yo, I only want to talk about solutions. Let's talk about solutions. I'm with that. Let this be that. Like, you know what I'm saying? It seemed like every it seemed like half the people in the chat keep wanting to you're having. I think a lot of y'all need to sit back while we're having this conversation. Y'all need to look at the stuff y'all putting in the chat. A lot of stuff is it, y'all are having trauma responses. Is this how an adult, like if your child came home to you and has some issues and something really happened, how are we responding? Are we just going to lose our minds and go crazy? Or are we going to start being more responsible? Are we going to start being, uh, how are we going to find balance and just I'm talking about just ways of approaching dealing with issues. If we all say we have faith and whether it be Allah, whether it be Christ, whether it be whomever, like when you stand in front of your God, how are you justifying the actions that you're taking? You know what I mean? Like what? Do, ooh, Andre, what does accountability look like in our community? Did that's, we get that's her, we, did we get her the link? The, the invite? Yeah, I just I just emailed her the link. It's in your email. Uh, okay, and uh, I, I don't know if it's cool for me to tell you what email address I sent it to, but um, yo, K, okay, the last if you see this, whatever the uh, you know, I mean, we was emailing each other, like, whatever the last email address you sent me, that's the one I, I sent it to. So, like, she, she'll pull up in a second. So, what does accountability look like in our community? I think, I think you and I just kind of agreed on. A way to go about it. I feel like the old school way was, hey, we going to find a nigga, you know, we fuck him up. That was the old school way. If it was the 70s and the 60s, you know, it would be that would be a physical retaliation against the individual man. Mm. But that's because at that time period. Our word meant more back in the day. I think accountability is public scrutinization, too, as well. Agreed. Like okay. put a name on it. Like if 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 this stuff is real, put a name on it. Let's all put a name on it. And then that's gonna take away the money. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take away the reputation. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like I think we should start putting names on it. Like because mm -hmm. we're trying to like talk around. I'm like, mm. but again, we got to be careful with that because I I just be wanting to make sure things are true before we start to put somebody under the 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 uh. Well, the and that was yeah, that's the reason why I stopped the video before she started putting people's names out here. I I because I, I don't want this to be about this particular person or canceling a specific person. I wanted this to be about, and I want this to be about us um having the discussion on how to solve how to deal with the issues. How, so let's, how, how does that it? I think somebody just put it, but how does that like that's then we get back to where we started, right? Because if we're not putting a name on it, then we have no accountability. Then we're really just talking hypotheticals and circles. And then when it happens again, then we don't say the name, then it continues to happen. I uh, know, but if we, all right, so I, I hear what you're saying. Don't, I, I'm going to push back and say, if I'm giving you a different process by which to think about the issue and to approach the issue, if it does happen now, you you know how to effectively deal with the issue. So now, if we're having this, you as the person that, that as the victim, as the victim, a as the victim, and the person that's the friend of the victim, the person that's it, it, yo it, as as the police officer, we all have different. We all need to be adjusting the way we approach this situation. We need to we need to stop worrying about. Every individual situation, we all need to be addressing how do we be show up properly for those people when it happens. So, meaning as a friend, 
if I get the phone call and this, and I've had this happen with me the last I've had it happen once or twice within the last few years. I get a phone call. I have a friend crying on the phone and she's saying, yo, this just happened to me. The way I used to handle shit is give me this nigga name. Oh, we going to bury this nigga. But as a four, uh, over 40 man, now it's tell me what happened. Yo, are you prepared for me to come get you? Yo, I'm ready. Let's go to the police. Mm -hmm. And they're telling me, no, I don't want to do that. Da, da, da. And me being patient enough to understand that this person is going through something. I need to allow them to, you know, you know, cycle through their feelings. But I'm still going to be very adamant about, yo, let's bring this to light. Let's deal with this issue. You know what I'm saying? Let's 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 go to the police. Let's handle this the right way. All right. Now, nah, police aren't going to just take a woman's side. They're rocking with the fellow officer. I'll wait. I'm okay. Sorry, I think Shay's yeah. on here. We want to add her. Oh yeah. Uh. Yep. 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 Add her. I think she uh fixing her camera. Once she fix her camera, we'll add her to the stage. Okay. <laughs> Stan House, white shirt. You hit me. Yo, Kay. Hi. I. Good, good morning, dear. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry. To, I'm sorry to like throw you in the midst of a, a little hurricane. Nice. But um. All right. So what I what we are trying to do is have this conversation. I, I, we want to have a conversation about solutions and I appreciate you even texting me that like not wanting to go back and forth and argue with about this person and that person. Mm -hmm. I do want to be solution based in this conversation. So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I, I don't want to call people. I, yo, this ain't about being salacious. I really want this to be about how can me being an old nigga. What's salacious nigga, mean? Salacious meaning I, I don't want this to be about popularity and yeah, you know, this, ain't a, this ain't a Wendy Williams moment. I'm not trying to call everybody name out and call them. No, no, no. What I'm saying is I'm old. You know me, Kay. I'm an old nigga. You know, I like staying in the house. I stay out the way, but I don't never want you because I know you and I fuck with you. We homies. I never want you to feel uncomfortable when you go out. So what can I do to help make your situation more comfortable? How, what do I need to do? To preserve the scene that I've grown up loving. I grew up in this hip hop scene. Y'all wasn't, I know you ain't see me when I was out there, but I never wanted no person to feel uncomfortable. I got nieces, I got young ladies around me. I want them to feel comfortable. So what do I need to be doing? Mm. So let me say this. Wow. It's not anything in particular that you need to be doing because you're a safe person. You haven't been around people who, or I would just say, people show different sides of themselves to different people. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you don't know the things to do because like a lot of people saying, they're like, oh, I didn't know, you know, I didn't, like, I don't know. So the only thing that you can do, you personally, even you, J. Hill, people who know that they're safe people, they don't know what's going on. You ask people around you. Before you start working with people, before you start doing certain events, before, you know, if you hear something, you don't brush it under the rug. You say, you know, like, oh, like what you heard about this artist, what you have a conversation with that artist. You'll tell me your background. Yo, how do you feel? I feel like we don't really get to know each other around here. It's kind of like who got a little bit of clout or oh, they got a little bit of clout. We need them on this platform. And it's like. Well, and it's also social media's fault nowadays because we don't try to get to know each other. No one's really digging into each other's person anymore. It's just about how everything looks, which is fine. So I feel like what we need to do here locally is actually communicate with each other. And when things actually, but, and I know y'all said don't say names, no, none of that. That's fine. That's cute. But I agree with Jay Hill. What's the point of not saying names because then nothing will happen? The police not fixing shit. The police not fixing the motherfucking thing. And even then, let me not say this because the people directly, because I'm a respect y'all and I'm not going to say their names. But if you've seen the video, you've seen the names. They might not have committed a actual crime crime directly. So I wouldn't want to be like, yo, get the police on them. That's for that man's camp or that man's manager. I don't think he, because I don't know. I'm not a victim of that particularly of that particular artist in in specifics. I know of what his camp has done and what he has allowed. Now I know that I said if you allowed it, you just a part of it. I agree, but I wouldn't be like yo, officer, him, because reality is he did not commit the act. So he is the one who, and that's why I, I said this the other day. God 
puts us in a certain purpose in our life. God puts an anointing over your life, right? So if I was that artist, scratch everybody else. We're going to use that one headlining artist. If I was that artist and I found myself in that situation I was in two years ago and I had this management I had, I would have came to my people. I would have came to Baltimore. Everybody that's been supporting that got me up there after that protest, after all that shit happened, I would have came to my people on social media and I'd have been like, y'all, I'm fucked. I don't know what to do. I know this shit going on. You feel me? I don't know what to do. Shit, I'm a little scared of the nigga myself. You feel me? My career at stake. My life at stake. It's so many things that's at stake. I don't know how to help y'all. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I would appreciate that much more than a, I ain't know. Oh, we gonna, we gonna put that in the past. Because reality is, you know. So if you speak out and you speak your truth, whether the police gonna do something or not, we gonna act like life ain't been the same as it's been all throughout history. The people gonna rock with you because the people is how you got there. The police ain't help you get there. So that don't make no sense. And people live in fear too much. That's why people don't like confrontation. People don't like a lot of things nowadays because mm -hmm. people live in fear. But like I was saying, if this was the civil rights movement, my nigga, we would be fucked. Because this is a small level of fucked up shit that is happening around us that we can't even just speak on. We can't even just speak on. That's like even, even, and that's why I ain't really saying nothing on social media the next two days. Cause it's like, like I said, I'm not trying to build no clout or no shit. It's just literally my peers around me are like, yo, we can't believe this is, this is bothering us so much. It's still shit happening to this day. These niggas don't take accountability for. It. So I just said, you know what? Y'all need to stop telling me, tell them. Tell them this is something that we should be saying because if you don't feel safe, that's your right in my neighborhood type shit. Like, and my thing is, if y'all know the past and the situations that have occurred, if y'all are really new people, and I'm not trying to be funny, y'all just know this is my personality. I would have been doing turkey drives. I would have been keeping close to the hood. I would have been making music about mental awareness, about victim awareness. I would have been doing things to show people that I at least care a smidgen. At least a smidgen. Mm. So mm. I don't even think it's something that you have to do directly. It's something that those people have to acknowledge within themselves that, look, nigga, we was wrong. We was wrong. How do we make it right? You don't disappear for a couple days and then you come back and act like, what, Baltimore don't love me no more. That's crazy. Mm. That's insane. That's not fair. That's not fair to us. That's not fair to the people who have been victims. It's not fair. Whether it was two years ago, 10 years ago, 20 days ago, 13 weeks. It's not fair. The way the internet works now and the way if people... And the crazy thing is people want to have a following. They want people to be attached to them. Show your truth. Show your truth. If you want people to respect you and love you and appreciate your music for who you are, nigga, who the fuck are you? Mm. Not just a nigga running around with the parties with shysties on. The nigga's wearing shysties the first year every event because he know niggas didn't want to see him. Mm. Why so did he come out? If, if I may jump in, I think some of the key things you were saying, and I, I would like to, I, I want to make sure that people are locking in with the key things. Number one, being more attentive to who you let in your circle. You know what I'm saying? And like you said, vetting people. Now, I, I would have to apologize for my generation for not teaching your generation to be more cognizant. When I was a kid, I, it was banged in my head that you are who you hang out with and you really need to know who the people are around you and making sure that you can be safe and that they can be safe. Y'all can be safe as a collective. So like, that's a problem on us. And I'll definitely be doing more of a job to making sure that people are vetting. Vetting people are number one. Number two, like I said, and she just said in her statement, I wanted to have this conversation because it's a difficult conversation. And I, I, I get sick and tired of seeing young ladies like her because this ain't the first time I've seen a video like that. And then it's like, all right, we have backdoor conversations, but there's nothing ever like, brought together and then like trying to at least address it mm. number three is yo like niggas need to be more vigilant about 
dealing with the yo the young ladies that are being victimized we need to be supporting them so they can come forward if it's if this is a real situation come forward let the claims be official and then on the flip side bro if you've been accused of something and you you swearing it's that you ain't then cool you need to come out and y'all need to have a real resolution it, this is what i'm gonna tell you why people not gonna do that because they said yeah. that two years ago mm. they said we was gonna have community meetings and we going to bring the people out and the victims going to speak up. It's not because them behind closed door, the victims are being threatened. Them mm -hmm. behind closed door, the victims are being scared. So it's like, we can say all this now and be like, oh yeah, like let's tell the, because the thing is, yes, we should make women comfortable enough to speak out. But reality is, it's, the victim should not have to speak out when they already, that like, this is something that they already been been through and had to relive over the last couple of years. So it's just like, if anything, that's why I didn't even want to say your name like that, who did the ex, because I don't know yo. You feel me? Like, I don't know yo, never seen yo. I just knew his name was Lowe's, all that other shit. So it's like, for people who know directly, I feel like it's time for them. If I was those people that put on the show, and mind you, if I knew what we went through a couple of years ago, if I knew my camp, was having problems with not having problems. If I knew my camps was fucking monsters, if I knew that, and if I knew I was a fucking star and I'm an artist and I'm trying to do these things in Baltimore, my first event out every before every event, I will probably have a charity event. I will probably send out notices to let people know this will be a safe event. We will have security. We will have these things. You will be safe. That would be something I do at every event. I wouldn't be on the internet talking about shit that don't matter. If I know what just happened in my community, I would be speaking out to women. I would be doing things like y'all doing. I would be having sit down conversations. I would, if I was the artist, I would be like, yo, let me get her on here so she can tell me her story. But niggas not doing that because niggas know, niggas know how this world has been working. And we seeing it unfold in every, in different places we seeing it unfold. It's, it's the same thing here. So it's up to those people. And that's why I didn't add them people. I know I said names cause I'm a very direct person. I'm a very blunt person. I don't like, that's why I don't speak a lot. Cause I don't like not saying names. Why are we doing that? If somebody did you wrong, if somebody did some wrong shit, they wrong. And this is also something I want to say cause I, I, I ain't even want to get on their asses. I don't believe everybody deserves to be scrutinized for the rest yeah. of their lives. Jesus died for our sins. You feel me? So it's not saying because you do shit, you a bad, you do bad shit, you a bad person for the rest of your life. But yeah. when you continue to do bad shit, you lie about doing bad shit, you enable other people around you to do bad shit. Now I'm looking at you crazy. Word. I don't mean to jump. I don't, I'm not trying to cut you off. I need to clarify something. And then we actually do have to ball out because I got a meeting at one. All right. So for, let me clarify when she used it, when she said the name Los and not King Los. No, King, no, just no. Live in Baltimore. Then the King Los is not in Baltimore. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let's clarify that. And then, um, not, nobody y'all well, know this nigga is off the face of the earth. You will yeah, not find this nigga. more than likely. Or got a stay in account. All right. Rod Doe said, How can you protect somebody behind closed doors? We'll get into that another day. But yo, I want to I want to continue this conversation. Yo, love K. I appreciate you for standing up and saying something. You know, I got mad love for you. Please be safe out in these streets. You know, if you need me, you call my phone, nigga. Like, and y'all you know I mean you gotta talk. Hey, you gotta talk to old niggas so niggas can put you on the game. But if y'all don't, if y'all don't listen to the old niggas, can't nobody protect you. That's all I gotta say. That's all that's I'm ending nah, on that. Nah, no, nah, 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 appreciate y'all, man. Listen, not not right here, but uh listen, man. We gotta start putting a name on it and, and, and standing up. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to K, bro. I appreciate you for pulling up. But I think the only way we want to stop this is if you put a name on it. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be 100 with you. Put a name on both both ends, cause it be some women out here who be false, mm -hmm. false accusing niggas. And like, I done had some shit happen to me, and my homies came to me and be like, bro, she did this to a few other guys, and mm -hmm. they, they ain't posted on social media. You know what I'm saying? They ain't, not saying they ain't take up for me. Yeah, they ain't believe her because her track record wasn't good. But shit, they ain't take up for me either. I mean, not saying take up right. for me, but I ain't getting nothing in public. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, you know right, I'm saying? right. Like, I think we need to start putting names on both ends. The both people ends. that's lying, put a name on it. Yeah, let, I'm, let, I'm, let them niggas I'm, know. 
That's exactly what I said. Both ends need to come to the table and it should need to be dealt with. You know what I'm saying? And if you need protection, there's going to be protection in place for you. You know no, what I mean? This is, I think, I think, I, hey, yeah. I, man, we could do that. I'm with the conversation because I ain't scared. I think that's another thing. People be scared. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. hey, man, I don't know. But I, we got to go. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. wish I could go more into it because I was listening, but I, I got to go. Oh. Yo, well, let's hey y'all keep it locked. He's gonna let y'all know we can probably do Monday or Wednesday or something like that. But yeah, we're gonna be back ASAP. I, I promise y'all. All right, man. We'll see y'all later. Talk to y'all later.